Texas's traditionally outstanding marching bands, the Kilgore College Ranger Marching Band, Twirlers, and Color Guard. Enjoy our pregame show, Traditions and Legends, as the band performs the Kilgore College fight song, Across the Field, Alma Mater, and Our National Anthem. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to RU St. John Stadium for today's contest between the, the visiting Trinity Valley Cardinals and your very own Kilgore College Rangers. And now would you stand please as the Ranger Band performs the Kilgore College School Song. You may be seated. We will have the national anthem once the teams have returned to the playing field.
And a pleasant good afternoon to you from Mari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Texas. Welcome to our broadcast of Kilgore College Football on the Kilgore College Sports Network and our Kilgore College YouTube channel. Now, for those of you who are viewing today, we will let you know that our play-by-play -play of the broadcast will start at 3 o'clock. We'll be joining our radio partners at KTBB 97.5 FM at the top of the hour for the kickoff of the Kilgore College Trinity Valley Community College game. While you are waiting for kickoff, we want you to enjoy the pageantry of the pregame show by the Kilgore College Band. So enjoy the pregame here on the field at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium, and we'll touch base with you right before we have our opening kickoff on the Kilgore College Sports Network and 97.5 FM, 600 AM, KTVB. The officials for today's game are the referee, Dwayne Allen, Caston Richard, Ryan Marshall, Clifford O'Neill, Tyler Dabble, Mike Albanetti, Logan Knight, and Stephen Colton, Cotton.
Welcome to the field, your number three ranked Kilgore College Rangers. Welcome to the field, the Trinity Valley Cardinals. joining us on our live stream today on our Kilgore College YouTube channel. We'll be ready to join our radio affiliate, KTBB Radio. At the top of the hour at 3 o'clock, we'll begin this broadcast with our play-by-play, -play, the opening kickoff coming up at 3 o'clock. So enjoy the pregame pageantry while you're awaiting our join with the radio team for our broadcast on KTBB and, of course, right here on the Kilgore College Sports Network. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, would you please stand? Join your voices with the sound of the Kilgore College Ranger Band as they honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
captains for Trinity Valley. Number one, David Tualalengili. Number two, Joe Sniffen. And number six, Reed Pulliam. For the Rangers, number one, Chris Marshall, number two, Cameron Peters, and number 34, Kiritapu Kalalie. Kilgore College won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Texas. Manny Almanza with Kenny Smith. As this afternoon, it's a big battle in the NJCAA as well as in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference as the Kilgore College Rangers battle the Trinity Valley Community College Cardinals. Kilgore College is the number three team in the nation. Trinity Valley is number four, and both of these teams are tied for first place in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference with Tyler Junior College. All three of those teams coming into action today with a record of three wins and one loss in conference play. Joining me on the field, our color commentator, Kenny Smith. Good afternoon, Kenny. How are you today? Well, we will have Trinity Valley receiving the opening kickoff this afternoon. Kilgore College will be kicking it away. KC going from south to north. That is right to left from a broadcast position here at RE St. John Memorial Stadium to begin the game. So teeing it up and kicking it off for the Kilgore College Rangers. It will be Carlos Vasquez, the sophomore place kicker from Longview, Texas. And Trinity Valley has a couple of men back to receive their kickoff standing at the five yard line, there's the kick away by Vasquez underway. The ball will take a bounce and be picked up at the five yard line to the 10, coming up to the 20 yard line and being taken down at the 22 yard line. The return man for the Cardinals of Trinity Valley. Uh, let's go ahead and get that number, but also we do have a couple of whistles here. Hopefully we don't have any flags to start the ball game as return man for Trinity Valley Community College. And yes, we do have flags. It is Rashawn Mumphrey. He is a running back out of Alto, Texas. Now we'll see what the flags are going to be here. So right away, Kenny Smith, a penalty to start the ball game with Trinity Valley and Kilgore. It's always competitive, always physical. All right, we do have Trinity Valley's team out on the field. Kilgore is going to have their special teams head to the sidelines, and now we'll see how they're going to do this. And it looks like they are going to go ahead and bring the teams back out for a re-kick. We'll see what we can get from the officials momentarily. It looks like they might have either waved things off or it was offsetting. Did not have a signal, so we'll go ahead and get things started again. So it actually we do now know that it will be a five-yard penalty against Kilgore College, and the Rangers will be re-kicking. So not the way you actually want to start the game if you're a Kilgore College Ranger. They did have a good stop on the special teams. The return for TVCC was a 17-yard return, but now we'll get to do it all over again. Once again, we want to welcome you, those of you who are listening on KTBB 97.5 FM at KTBB.com and the KTBB mobile app. And those of you who are watching on the Kilgore College YouTube channel, thank you so much for joining us for the broadcast today. So here we go one more time. Carlos Vasquez will be kicking it away. And he gets his foot into it, and here we go. 
Ball will be taken at the 10 yard line this time by Mumphrey. He's going left side to the 25 to the 30. Has a little bit of room before he runs out of space on the far side of the field. Out of bounds, helping out on the stop for Kilgore Mumphrey College. It is to Darian Boone, helping force the Force ball carrier Mumphrey out of bounds. And the ball will be at the 35, 38. They're trying to settle where they're going to put the sticks. And they will go ahead and put it there at the 38-yard line. So Kilgore comes out wearing the home blue jerseys today with white numerals. And then they also have the silver helmets with the blue star on each side. And a pant bat. Kenny, you're going to have to help me. From here, it looks like a light gray football pant. Trinity Valley white jerseys, black numerals, solid black pants and black helmets and on the quarterback for this Trinity Valley Community College team it is Darian Peace first down Peace takes a snap fires it over ball is caught at the 45 yard line coming left side to midfield and running out of space in Kilgore territory at the 48 yard line the first first down of the ball game the pass is complete for Rayshon Glover he is a sophomore wide receiver out of Rosenberg and he has the first down at the 47 of Kilgore Pass once again goes left side. Glover with a catch, and he will get to the 40-yard line. He'll be close to the sticks near first down yonders for Trinity Valley. We'll see where the referee puts him down. He puts him down at the Kilgore 37, and that will be enough again for the first down for Trinity Valley. So two pass plays, two first downs for Trinity Valley. Ball at the 37-yard line. Trinity Valley moving quickly left to right. Peace with a handoff, and this first down play, and that's a short gain of two yards to the 35-yard line, and the ball carrier for the Cardinals this time is Quincy Thompson, a sophomore out of Humble, Texas, and on the stop for the Rangers, nice job by Xavier Tibbs. So second down and eight from the 35-yard line. Double white outs to the left, and this is going to be the keeper this time by the quarterback. Peace is going to run into some trouble. He's able to cut up field, and a flag goes down at the very end of the play as Darian Peace for Trinity Valley is down at the 32 for a three-yard gain. That would make it a third down and five, and this is a holding penalty against Trinity Valley, so that one is coming back. If you're just joining us, we are nearly a minute and a half into the ball game. Trinity Valley with a football in Kilgore territory. No score in the contest. The holding penalty was the ball back to the 35-yard line of Kilgore College. Second down and 18 now for Trinity Valley at the Kilgore 45-yard line. Peace with a snap and the handoff. And it's a short gain to the 41-yard line by Quincy Thompson. So now you're looking at a third down and 14 for Trinity Valley. Well, Kenny, I think fall came and then left pretty quickly this afternoon. Darian Peace, all kinds of time, just for a moment, and then he is hit from behind. Nice job by Xavier Tibbs of Kilgore College to get in there and hit the quarterback Peace. He threw the ball just in a nick of time. However, it will be ruled as an incomplete pass, and it is a fourth down from the 41-yard line, a fourth down and 14, and Trinity Valley will be punting it away. So, Kenny, nice job by Kilgore College to be able to go ahead and hold Trinity Valley after the Cardinals got into the Rangers' territory at about the 38 is where that drive ended up. Punting for the Cardinals, number 38, James Allen, back deep for the Rangers. It's number four, Michael Phoenix. And here is the kick away by the TVCC punter, James Allen. And the ball will be picked up by a Kilgore return man who was tossed out of bounds very quickly at the 15-yard line. And referee comes in to try to make sure there are no Phoenix shenanigans. The return by, by Michael Matthew Phoenix. Martin. Not much of a return as he gets it to the 13-yard line on the stop for TVCC, Matthew Klein. So no score. 12.41 to play in the first quarter. Kilgore with the football for its first offensive possession ball at its own 15-yard line. line. First down, Rangers.
Punt of 30 yards by James Allen of Trinity Valley. Kilgore first down at its own 15-yard line. So Trinity Valley had a 14-yard pass play for a first down, and then subsequently they were able to march down the field, and then the holding penalty is what stopped them. Now we have a stoppage in play here, Kenny. What are you able to pick up from this? Yeah, I see Coach Gooden trying to signal up to the press box, the clock operators, uh, to get their attention, and we'll see what they're going to do. They are running the play clock on the south side of the field. Kilgore is facing away from that, and I think they're going to try to run it down to zero, and that way the play clocks will match, and then they'll keep the time on the field temporarily until the other play clock can get restored. <laughs> the on field play clocks have. All right. So it looks like they're going to keep it on, on the field. field. We hear Mark Freed, our public address announcer, let the crowd know that. So here we go. It is Kilgore's football at the 15 yard line, and eagle eyed Kenny Smith will also keep an eye on that for us as well. All right, trips to the right, one to the left. First down, Kilgore College. The Rangers have the football at their own 15. The Rangers' first play of the ball game, and the quarterback, Cameron Peters, will try to throw it, and it'll end up being in a double coverage. Chris Marshall was the intended receiver, and two Trinity Valley Cardinals were in the pattern ahead of him. Calls incomplete, second down and 10. So Cameron Peters is the Kilgore College quarterback. He's been the starter all season long for the Rangers. Cam has averaging 227 yards per game passing has 1,138 yards total on the season, a completion percentage of 53.3%. Second down and 10 for the Rangers at the 15-yard line. And this time, Peters will do a two-step drop. He'll fire it out of the backfield. Ball caught at the 10-yard line, up to the 15, to the 20, and then diving to the 22-yard line for Kilgore College. That is Dominique Williams. He's the freshman running back out of Marshall, getting the start today for the Rangers. That will be a gain to the 23 of eight yards on the play. You're looking now at a third down and two for the Rangers. Kilgore College and Trinity Valley scoreless as we're just starting. We're nearly three minutes into the first quarter. Double wide receivers to the left, one to the right for Kilgore. And now we have the tight end stepping back off the line of scrimmage. Third down, Peters will hand it off. Williams breaks free, first down and more to the 30, right side to the 40, and that's where he's taken down. And there's a first down for Kilgore College. Dominique Williams able to pick up the yardage and on the stop for Trinity Valley Community College. Isaiah Crosby, he is from Maynard, Texas. First down for Kilgore College. That is a nice run of 17 by Dominique Williams. From the 40, first down for Kilgore. Peters, he'll fake it to Williams. He's rolling to his right, looking for a block. Now he dumps the ball. It's caught by the tight end, going upfield and out of bounds near the 48-yard line. The reception for Kilgore College is made by Donovan Johnson, sophomore tight end out of Plano, Texas. That was a nice play run by the Rangers. I thought Peters was going to run. Now there's a flag down at the 48. He ended up dumping the ball off at the last moment, and we'll see what this penalty is going to be now with a penalty flag sitting at the 48-yard line, and I might have misidentified. Nope, it is number 88. Just had his jersey rolled up a little bit, and it looks like it's going to be a penalty here against Kilgore College, and the Rangers are flagged for the ineligible player downfield, and so they'll move this one back. That otherwise wiped out an eight-yard gain by the Rangers.
All right, the ball at the 35-yard line now for Kilgore College, making it a first down and 15 with 10.51 to play. Double wideouts to each side for Kilgore. No score in the contest. Snap goes to Peters, fading back. Here comes the rush. He fires a deep ball left side, and it's incomplete. Well, the pass was intended for KC's Dequavius Bowens, and it was one-on-one -on -one coverage. And now the Rangers will have a third down, make it a second down, and 15. On the coverage, Jaitlin Hampton for Trinity Valley. So now on second down, the snap. Peters fades back, looks upfield, fires the ball, and it is caught. And the man is taken down at the 41-yard line. So the ball carried down at the 41-yard line on the play. And with 10.25 to play, you have a third down for the Rangers. That is a pickup of two yards on the short pass. So third down and long for the Kilgore College Rangers, and the Rangers have the football at the 41-yard line. Peters fades back, looking upfield. He fires the pass, and it's going to be incomplete, and that is well over the head of the intended receiver, Bowens, for Kilgore College. So the Rangers end up giving up the football one more time here, a three and out for Kilgore College. And we have 9.55 to play, and Kenny Smith, Kilgore College, after a drive that had some promise to it, on fourth and nine, will be punting the football away. Well, Peters was waiting and waiting. He looked to his left and just stayed to his left and was, I think he was already honed in on one receiver and waiting for him to clear. But by the time receiver got towards the open field, got covered up by four different Cardinal and just nowhere to go with that pass. And so now the kick away coming up for Back Kilgore College. The Rangers punting it for the first time. So each team has had a punt at the way after they had some promising drives this time for Kilgore. It's Chris Baldazzo out of Kilgore High School. He'll air this one out. And a fair catch is made at the 20-yard line. And that's where the Cardinals will take over, making the fair catch for Trinity Valley, Isaiah Crosby. So first down as Kilgore College will, on defense, come back out and try to face the Cardinals down again. Trinity Valley has the ball at its own 20-yard line. 9.47 to play in the first quarter. There's no score between the Rangers and Trinity Valley Community College. So here come the Cardinals onto the field now again. Trinity Valley and Kilgore in the conference are tied for first place with records of three wins and one loss. Both of these teams right behind each other in the NJCAA. Kilgore three, Trinity Valley four, so this is a big matchup here. Double wideouts make a trip to the right. First down, Darian Pease has a completion at the 25 to the 30-yard line. And this will be a first down to the Cardinals at the 31-yard line. The reception is made by Jared Jackson, a sophomore wide receiver out of Houston, Texas. So it'll be trips to the left again, one to the right on second down. Make it on first down and 10. Pass by Pease and almost making a great catch for Trinity Valley sacrificing the body. He's going to end up jogging off to the field. No, he'll go back to the line of scrimmage. But boy, that was a great attempt by Ladarius Fair to try to make the grab the sophomore wide receiver out of Lancaster. Instead, it falls incomplete, second down and 10. And that was a pass that was just a bit tall for him. Peace this time will hand the ball off. And a nice job by the Rangers. Vincent Page comes in and says, no, you're not going to gain a whole lot of yardage. Carrying the ball for Trinity Valley, it is Clarence Dalton. He's a freshman running back out of Galveston, Texas. And let's see, the ball is down at the 33. So now you're looking at a third down, and we will call it nine, just a one-yard pickup, and make it a two-yard pickup. And the pass is complete to the 41-yard line. The reception for Trinity Valley is made by Jaquan Lohman. And will that be enough for the first down? Now, I thought the line of scrimmage originally was the 31. They have the six at the 32. So it is a gain to the 41, making it a fourth down and one. And Coach Sherrod Poteet of Trinity Valley 
will send the punting unit out onto the field. That was a pickup of eight by the Cardinals. Wow, that was probably a, a, a huge mistake, unintentional mistake by the wideout and a great pass by Peace on the outside, but just a yard short of that first. And I was the same as you, man. I kept looking at the scoreboard, thought the line of scrimmage was a 31 as well. So here we go on fourth down. There is the kick away. Phoenix with the catch at the 18. He loses his helmet as he goes down at that point. So the tackle for Trinity Valley was made by Matthew Klein. That's the second time Klein has made the stop. Phoenix had his helmet ripped off, so he's sitting on the turf right now, taking a bit of a break. Uh, that's not the most pleasant thing to have happen to you. The punter, James Allen, for Trinity Valley aired that pun out. And so uh, Phoenix gets up, and he'll be able to come off the field under his own power with 8-16 to play in the first quarter. There's no score between the Rangers and Trinity Valley. Yeah, Matthew Klein came in with that tackle, man, and he came in on the spin move by Phoenix. But as he bent Phoenix over, Phoenix put it all the weight he had on that left leg, and that's what he's favoring coming off the field right now. He tosses his helmet aside right now, but the tackle was fine. He pulled the helmet off inadvertently, of course, but uh, he bent Phoenix almost in half, put a lot of weight on that left leg. We'll keep an eye on that. So the Rangers will come out with one, make it two wide receivers to the left, make it to the right, excuse me, one to the left for the Rangers. New man in the backfield, it's Trey Epps for KC is a Kilgore High School product on first down. Epps will get the carry. He's going to try to cut back and he'll get a few yards on the play. They'll give him the 21 the yard three, line. Three, so he'll pick up yeah. three making it a second down and seven for the Rangers. You know, it's it's interesting and Manny, you and I talk about this a lot watching the dominance of the local high schools and so many Kilgore Bulldogs end up on this Kilgore Ranger football team that continue their success and I go all the way back to the punt of Chris Baldazzo, and he, he just doesn't miss hardly at all. He'll turn the football over, a fantastic, just skilled punter, and then we see Epps in here with straight ahead running like he did in high school. And they played on this field for their high school careers, very familiar with where they are at on this home turf. Second down, Epps is going to run to his right-hand side trying to get away from a defender, and he will have the first down. Trey Epps able to... Get speed and go up ahead against the defender, giving chase for Trinity Valley. It was Kai Brown. Brown is the one who ended up taking him down from behind, but not before Epps speeds forward to the 31 and has a 10-yard carry for a first down. Yeah, and the speed and the fact that Trey doesn't mind getting the contact, so he's okay getting wide, knowing that he's going to have to plant and go right into the surge of this defense. But, boy, stringing out this Cardinal defense has been working right now for the Rangers in this first quarter. Double wideouts this time to the left and one to the right for Kilgore College. First down, KC at the 31. And Epps one more time, sort of a delayed handoff, and he will get a yard to the 32. They might give him the 33 if they are fortunate. Tackle this time made for Trinity Valley by Reed Pulliam. He's a sophomore linebacker out of Belton, Texas. So second down and nine after the one-yard carry by Epps. Yeah, Chase Canada from uh, Trinity Valley. He sealed off that inside Trey wanted to cut back inside. Canada was right there, started to plant and head back outside and got planted himself as Reed Pulliam put his full body into him, knocked him down. So with 6.27 to play, the Rangers facing a second down and nine from the 32-yard line. Double wet ass to the left, one to the right. There's no score in this ball game. Peters gets on a cross route, hits Chris Marshall, who is upended at the 38-yard line. Tackle for Trinity Valley made by... Dewan Scott, and he is a sophomore linebacker out of Rockdale, Texas. So now you're looking at a third down, and the Rangers end up needing four for the first down. Pickup of five. Make it seven. Well, Cameron Peters really showing a lot of poise in the pocket right now. It's the third time he's looked and checked off two different receivers, gone to his third option on that cut across the middle of the field by Marshall. Marshall only his sixth reception, seventh reception all season, only in his third game here. So for the Rangers, at 5.37 to play, the handoff, Epps, he runs into his own man. He's able to shake him off, tries to get the first down, and maybe with an extra effort, we'll have the first down at the 41-yard line. He will pick up the necessary yardage of three yards, and that'll be a first down. Ended up getting a little bit of help from behind by one of his offensive linemen, William Boone, a sophomore from Conyers, Georgia, who weighs 320 pounds. Gives him four yards to the 42-yard line, and I think that extra shove gave up the first down. Yeah, and uh, he also got a butt from uh, Cameron Lambert, who's the who, he ran into Cameron's butt himself, and then when finally went 
Phillips was able to get back up. Lambert went ahead and walked over and told him, hey, everything's good. Okay, we're, we're still buddies. I'm trying to help you. 4.53 to play in the first quarter. No score between the Rangers and the Cardinals. Number three against number four. On first down, the handoff. Epps has a big hole at the midfield stripe, and he's taken down at the 46 of Trinity Valley. So Epps with a run of 13 yards and another first down for the Rangers. Make it 12 to the 47. All right, this is just bad memories for somebody like me who's, who's watched this kid, you know, his, his sophomore, junior, and senior year. At Kilgore, his junior and senior year. This really just looks like the kid that just walked out here from high school where you got to keep feeding him the football, and he just keeps doing the right thing. And he certainly is doing the right thing, helping out the Rangers' cause right now. First down for Kilgore College. And, again, the football at the 47-yard line of Trinity Valley Community College. So this time, Peters, he'll take the snap. Looks like it's an option. Oh, and he slips and falls on his own accord. They will give credit to the tackle for Trinity Valley to McCoy Casey, a sophomore defensive lineman out of Crosby, but Peter slips on his own accord back at the 47 of Kilgore. That's a loss of six. You're looking at second down and 16. Well, the first time we've seen him in an in indecision mode there where he just kind of cut the wrong side. And, you know, this goes back to those two kick returns to start this football game. Both times on plants, you see some slippage in the footing. And I, I know that, boy, playing two games on here in less than you know, less than 18 hours is kind of tough on this field, but there are a lot of spots on this football field right now where it just looks like a lot of rubber has worked its way to the surface. Second and 16, Peters with trips to the right is rolling to his right. Nobody's there, so he's going to take it upfield on his own court. Hurdles a defender and gets down to the 38-yard line of Trinity Valley. A dicey run by Peters. The Rangers will end it with a third down and one. A 15-yard run by Cam Peters, and three of those were in the air. Well, Cameron, 34 carries, 205 yards on the ground coming in, and four touchdowns on the ground. Once he decided to tuck it and go up that sideline, you could tell he was going to try to do whatever he could to get whatever he could. Had no idea, obviously, from back here, he was going to leave his feet and jump four or five feet in the air to try to just somersault his way to a first down. A double wide out to the left now, one to the right. Here we go. This will be a handoff to Dominique Williams, and the Rangers will end up with a first down as Williams will get forward three yards to the 35-yard line. A pile of white-shirted Cardinals there leading the charge for Trinity Valley. Kobe Kendrick, he's a sophomore defensive end out of Mineola. All right, well, we've seen where they mark it really close to first down territory and either give them the first down or just say it's fourth and one or so. And that time, we're at the benefit of the doubt on that particular play. And, boy, just got enough for that first down to move in the chains again. Two minutes, three seconds left in the first quarter. There's no score between number three, Kilgore, and number four, Trinity Valley, with double wideouts to the left, one to the right for the Rangers. Peters on first down takes a snap. He'll fake it to Epps. Here comes the rush. Peters over the middle, and the ball is caught at the 25-yard line, and depending on the spot, that should be enough for the first down for the Rangers. Catch is made by Carter Rogas, a freshman wide receiver out of Hallsville, Texas. Nice job on the tackle for Trinity Valley by Joriel Washington. That kept Rogos from getting further upfield, but it doesn't stop it. That ends up being a 10-yard gain and a first down for the Rangers. So Kilgore with a nice time-consuming drive. A minute 27 left in the first quarter. No score in the contest, but the Rangers on the move and just taking their time doing it. Well, Rogos will set up in the slot left this time as well. And, boy, he just did a little drag route from the opposite side of the field and just kind of sat down the middle and waited for his quarterback to see him. So first down, Peters from the 25, end zone. No, but it's caught at the three-yard line. Rogas makes the grab again. They'll put him out of bounds at the four. First and goal to go, Kilgore College. What a beautiful pass by Peters into the hands of Carter Rogas to get the first down. Okay, we'll take it away, make it to the five. It's a 20-yard completion nonetheless in front of Jerry L. Washington. Well, as far as my numbers are concerned, Manny, I don't have Rogas with a single catch all season. He's made two here and possibly put these guys at least in field goal position. But he really rallied up the sideline here. The Kilgore Rangers absolutely love this little freshman making two key catches right there back to back. Double wideouts to the left for Kilgore. First and goal, KC from the five yard line. There's the snap to Peters, high snap. He's gonna fake it, take it straight up the middle and will he get into the end zone? He sure does, touchdown, Kilgore College. Oh, wait a minute, referee says no. The knee touch at the one yard line. So four yard pickup by Cameron Peters of Kilgore. 18 seconds left in the first quarter. The Rangers with a second down and goal from the one yard line. It is Hall of Fame day here 
at Kilgore College. And at the half, we will have those Hall of Fame members introduced to the crowd here at RE St. John Memorial Stadium. In the meantime, this first quarter is about to wind down. And Pam Peters will get the snap off before the end of the first quarter to Trey Epps. Epps with a man on his back, trying to power into the end zone, and he does for the touchdown at the end of the first period of play. As Trey Epps gets into the end zone for the score for Kilgore College from one yard out. There's no time left on the clock in this first quarter, and Kilgore College has drawn first blood. It took the Rangers 15 minutes to do so, but the Rangers have a 6 to nothing lead over Trinity Valley. And I'm sure Trey Epps is no, you know, no uh, stranger to that side of the end zone either, as Epps Trapes his way through there a few times throughout his high school career as well. And almost fitting that they uh, give that football to Trey and let him finish up what turned out to be a pretty darn impressive drive, even with his numbers alone. And Baldaz is on for point after touchdown. Ball is down, kick is on the way and through the uprights. The kick is good, and that will end the first quarter of play. At the end of one from Kilgore's already seen John Memorial Stadium, the Rangers 7, and Trinity Valley Community College nothing. We'll take this 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTVB. Kilgore College would like to thank again our sponsors for today's game. Austin Bank, Azalea Orthopedics, Chick-fil-A, Aramark, Baylor Scott and White, Health, and TA Sports. Kilgore College will honor five individuals in one team at the beginning of halftime today who inducted this morning in the 2023 Kilgore College Athletic Hall of Fame. If you were inducted to the Hall of Fame this morning, please meet Athletic Director Courtney Pruitt on the field near the scoreboard just before halftime so we may, we may recognize you. Back deep for Trinity Valley. Number and we are back to Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. We're ready for the second quarter of play as Kilgore College has a 7 0 lead over Trinity Valley Community College. Manny Almanza with you this afternoon, along with Kenny Smith and Ethan Lodato, is our engineer back at our KTBB studios as the kick is away for Kilgore by Carlos Vasquez, taken at the 15 to the 20 to the 25, and the return man down at the 27, perhaps the 28-yard line. That return Mark man once return, again for Trinity Valley is Rashawn Mumphrey. So first down for Kilgore College, rather for Trinity Valley. Just nine seconds into the second quarter. Kilgore, seven, Trinity Valley nothing. And a nice drive by the Rangers. It was an 82-yard drive by Kilgore to get the first score of the ball game. So Kilgore College. Now on defense, Trinity Valley with the football at the 28-yard line. That was a 13-yard kickoff return by Mumphrey. And on first down, oh, a nice carry for the Cardinals on first down. All the way up to the 36-yard line. That's a pickup of eight for carry. Trinity Valley. And now you have a second down and two for the Cardinals. Hyman Drinkard, he is a sophomore running back from Richmond, Texas. He'll get the ball again. He's able to put his head down, spin away, and get a first down all the way to the 45-yard line of Kilgore College. Nice job on the run. That ends up being a carry of nine yards by Drinkard. First down, Trinity Valley at their own 45-yard line. 14-18 to play. Second quarter is underway. Drinkard again with a starter step. He's able to get by the defenders and get to the Kilgore 39-yard line. And yet another first down as Trinity Valley hurries on offense. That's a pickup of 16 yards to the Kilgore 39-yard line. And the Cardinals are on the move. Peace with a first down handoff to Drinkard one more time. He'll get it to the 35-yard line. That's a four-yard gain. Second down and six. Things slow down for just a little bit as Chris Robinson makes the tackle for Kilgore College. Yeah, they're, they're not giving you much of a time to take a breath there. Last, last four or five plays, Manny. Just Trinity Valley playing absolutely rocket ball right now. Not even giving Kilgore defense a time to get set, which is the obvious reason for the hurry up. So second down and six. Peace, and then the flags come down as the ball is in air and incomplete. The pass was intended for Rowdy Godwin of Trinity Valley, but whistles were heard as the ball was in play. It's a false start against Trinity Valley Community College. 
Against Trinity Valley. So again, the Rangers number three in the country, Trinity Valley number four, big game in the NJCAA, as well as the Southwest Junior College Football Conference with Trinity Valley, Kilgore, and Tyler Junior College all tied for first with records of three and one. Overall, TVCC five and one, Kilgore four and one, and Tyler at four and two. And Tyler is at Cisco. They started at one o'clock this afternoon in Cisco. Snap. Over the middle, ball is tipped, incomplete, flag is down. The quarterback for Trinity Valley, Darian Peace out of Malakoff, set that one a sail, and it'll be in tipped by Victor Page of Kilgore College, I believe. And now we'll see what the flag is with 13-12 to play. Yeah, Jalen Webb was back, he was the closest one to what may have been a, a tipped interception, and he put a shot on the receiver right at the tip, and the flag wasn't around that infraction, but it was a lot of groans right at the point of attack with the uh, with that hit. An eligible man downfield against Trinity that Valley, and so that will actually be a penalty that the Rangers will decline to make it a third down and 11. So the Rangers able to have the opportunity to decline a penalty this time with 13-12 to play. Double wide out to the left and one to the right. Make it two to the right for TVCC from the Kilgore 40. And now we have another flight comes down near the 40, and this will be a false start Trinity against Trinity Valley. Valley. False start against Trinity Valley. So oh. Trinity, Trinity Valley with a couple of penalties down. here, Kenny. Yeah, trying to answer that touchdown. And it's hard to answer the, the touchdown in the long drive. Uh, a couple of big plays is what puts you in this position. But uh, when, boy, when you turn around and make those mental mistakes, it just takes the wind out of your sails third and long now. Snap goes back to Peace, fires the ball, is caught on the crest and route at the 45 to the 40, and then down at the 35, ends up being a pickup of five yards on the play. You know, the play looked good from the early design of it. Dylan Robinson, Robinson makes the catch, but then he stumbled on the field, ends up going down after a five-yard gain to the 35, so you're looking at a fourth down and six for Trinity Valley. Well, Marcus Miltry is absolutely going to love that play once he gets into the film room. Fought off a blocker at the point of attack and at the tackle. Here is Peace on the run, short pass, caught by Drinker, and then he'll end up being taken down, and the Cardinals turn it over on downs. Great play for the Rangers on the side of the field. You have Vincent Page helping out on the stop for Kilgore College, but also in there for Kilgore College as well, Chris Robinson, and they'll give him credit for the stop. Boy, Chris got credit for the stop. He's not going to get credit for altering the path of the runner, but, boy, he was the one that put the hit that knocked the runner back stopped his progress and literally stopped the play. Nowhere to go right there. Well, when you stop somebody after the long drive and you make a hit, you make a couple big stop on third down and then fourth down for just a couple of yard gain. Well, you talk about a momentum uh, uh, inducer here after the long touchdown drive. See what, see what Kilgore's got up their sleeve right now. Willie Gooden here with 12.36 to go in the half. And now we have another flag down. So another penalty. And we'll see where Illegal we go with it this time. Illegal substitution against, against Kilgore as Dominique Williams didn't get off the field on time. Now, I think, it was, matter of fact, as soon as the referee threw the flag, Dominique just said, okay, uh, they caught that me. I'm just going to jog penalty. off and take a breather real quick. First, he, <laughs> he was not in a hurry to get off the field. Dwayne Martin, our referee tonight, tossed the flag, and all of a sudden Dominique just looked over the sideline and went, okay, I, I got to go. Yeah, we will check out who our referees are. The referee is Dwayne Martin, the umpire, Caston Richard. The linesman is Ryan Marshall, or the line judge, Ryan Marshall. Field judge, Clifford O'Neill. Head linesman is Taylor Dabble. As we go upfield for the Rangers all the way to the 40-yard line with the ball for Kilgore College, it is on Gary the Maddox, the freshman Gary running Maddox. back out of Euless, Texas. Tackle Haven't seen Gary seven. Maddox very much this Merrill season, Island. and he's able to gain Five yards or make it four. They'll give him four Game to the four, 39, second, second and down and six. Gary Maddox for Kilgore. Well, you know, Willie's got a little bit of football behind him, but yep. uh, to see the way he utilizes these young guys that have come in here and already made contributions here in the first half and a fantastic change of direction by Maddox, who's uh, listed at 5'11", 205. That's pretty generous. Maddox once again. Nope, it's going to be a keeper by Peters, and the referee pulled his flag out of the pocket, and then he puts it back in as Peters goes down. Cam the Peters man who the made the tackle for Trinity tackle Valley, Jerry L. Washington, Jerry lost Washington. his helmet after he made the stop, but Peters will end up getting to the 46-yard line the with 11.48 to play, and that'll be a first down for Kilgore College. That's a nice run by Peters of six. 
Yeah, I think Cameron's not going to be happy with himself right there because uh, uh, look at Zeke Freeman made a heck of a seal block on the outside, and Cameron Peters did not adjust to that. He went ahead and stayed outside, which is where he got tackled. But, boy, a great seal block on the outside by Freeman to hopefully help us move forward. Well, they're going to give him the 47-yard line. Maddox on first down, and the flag does come down this time as he is ushered out of bounds near the – Trinity Valley 43 yard line uh, on the stop for Trinity Valley. It's Lavelle howling, but this one is going to come back holding, holding against Kilgore. So the Rangers had a gain of eight yards on the play. And then it ends up coming back here. So a couple of eight yard runs, one counted for a first down. One does not. It comes back to the 37. Manny, if you're watching on the stream, you're going, who is this Gary Maddox kid? He changed directions, I think four times uh, within like three yards downfield. Maddox is putting on a little bit of a, a show right now. Unfortunately, it comes back from the penalty. It's going to be a call against Donovan Johnson on the hole. He was pleading his case, but to no avail, of course. Ball at the 37-yard line makes it a first and 20 for Kilgore. Peters looking upfield, has some time. Now rolling to his right, he's going to try to get it to Maddox, and he can't turn around in time. It was over his head and incomplete on the coverage Thank for Trinity you. Valley. Davion Scott. And so it's a second down to 20 for Kilgore. 10.47 left in the second quarter. Kilgore 7, Trinity Valley nothing. The Rangers scoring first at the end of the first quarter on a one-yard touchdown run by Epps. Baldazzo with the extra point kick. That finished off an 82-yard drive for Kilgore. Well, two receivers in the same area, but they weren't supposed to be. Maddox was just coming out of the backfield trying to find some place in the flats to go and looked up, and Zeke Freeman was open. That's actually who the pass was intended for, who was set up behind Maddox. And now we have a bunch of whistles again. And this will be another Kilgore College false penalty. Start. So now you know that Rangers. false start against the Rangers has to start being a bit frustrating Repeat to the uh, Ranger coaching staff. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, people don't get happier when the flags come out. You know, officials have got a job to do, and we can't do games without them. But, well, the more infractions that happen, it's not like uh, coaches look forward to it and go, you know, this is a – this is a lesson learned situation. You know, by the time you get to this level, you know, most of these guys are supposed to have their, you know, the concentration set up. It happens every game, but when they happen in bunches, especially when you got the momentum, it's tough. Trips to the right, one to the left for Kilgore. Kilgore moving left to right from our broadcast position in the second quarter of play, and Peter's pass is almost intercepted. It was intended for Freeman, batted away with the left hand by Davian Scott. That almost could have been a pick six. Instead, it's third down and 25 for the Rangers. The Rangers with a holding penalty and then a false start, have the ball at their own 32 yard line, have to get to the Trinity Valley 43 for the first down. Yeah, they had some great things going for them and felt pretty good, confident about the way they were moving the football and then the penalties started to add up and boy, it's just set up a third and Burbank road trip from where they're at right now. Trips to the left. Marshall will jog his way out to the left-hand side. Trips to the right, rather, for Kilgore. Snap goes to Peters. A couple of steps back, going to Marshall. He was getting mugged on the sideline, and a flag comes in very, very late. The defender, Jarek Harper, not liking that call at all. Coach Sherrod Petit of Trinity Valley is going to argue his case as well. As he was locked up with Marshall, Harper was but Marshall couldn't get away from Harper. Harper had him pinned against the sidelines physically. Well, Cameron had him picked That's out. As soon as the snap came back, down. he was looking right at Chris Marshall and waiting for him to just break away from the defender. And I think what had happened is it looked like Crosby had turned. As soon as he had turned to go upfield, he threw that left arm out and kind of impeded the progress of Marshall. And that's where the penalty came in. And you're right, Manny, it, I, and I'm way away from the play, but that, that flag did not come in until the ball was hit and whistle had blown. 10.33 left in the second quarter. Kilgore seven, Trinity Valley nothing. The Rangers with the benefit of the pass interference penalty against Trinity Valley have the ball at the 47 of Kilgore, 15 yard penalty. But the Rangers get new life with the first down at 10.33 of the second. Trips to the right, one to the left for Kilgore. Maddox in the backfield, standing to the left of Peters. Maddox will get the football. Lead block, Trinity Valley with some great penetration. And what a job for Trinity Valley to bottle up that run. The man who came in to give trouble to begin with is David Tui Halagenge. He is a sophomore linebacker out of Humble or Humble, Texas. And also coming in and helping out of the stop is McCoy Casey. 
There's nobody in this business that will take on the names blind like you will. Had help from the Trinity Valley broadcasters, yeah. and I appreciate their assistance. T-U-I-H-A-L-A-N-G-G-I-N-G-L-E. I, I don't know how you come up with it, Manny. Ball at the 44-yard line. A little bit of practice today. That's a loss of three. You're looking at a second down to 13 for KC. Peters takes a snap. Fake is the Maddox over the middle, and that line drive is incomplete. That was intended for Kilgore's Carter Rogas. Yeah, that was on Cameron Peters, too, as he had a great play fake, and he just did not get his arm up, his feet set in time as cutting across the middle, of course, was Carter Rogas, and Rogas had already made two great plays that set up that touchdown a couple of minutes back. But, boy, he made a great cut inside, was wide open, and Peters just could not hit him. All right, 9.44 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore 7, Trinity Valley nothing. Rangers with a third down and 13 from the 44-yard line. Doubles to each side. Fake to Maddox. Peters looking back, looking upfield. Fires the ball wide open for a moment as Freeman. He gets pushed and he makes the catch anyway. First down for Kilgore College and goal to goal at the six-yard line of Trinity Valley. The ball hung up for a little bit. Freeman kept his eye on it. The defender comes up for Trinity Valley to make a play. Nice effort for TBCC by Corey Kelly. But Freeman, after he got pushed, still makes the play. Rangers with a first and goal at the six. Yeah, we're going to give props to Cameron Lambert, the center. His snaps have been a little bit high this past series and got up so high, Peters had to leave his feet moments ago. But Lambert who had no primary blocking assignment, turned around and saw a rushing defensive lineman and put a body on him moments, probably just about a half a second before Peters let go of that football and really helped that play develop, giving him that extra second. We have a timeout on the field. One of the Rangers is coming off, not feeling well at the moment. And for Kilgore College, it is Caleb Leonard who is coming off the field for KC. 8.59 to play in the quarter. Rangers with a first down and goal to go at the six-yard line. That's a 50-yard pass moments ago by Peters to Freeman. First and goal to go, Kilgore. Uh, they're getting everything settled here with 8.58 to play. And we have one wide receiver to each side. Peters takes the snap. He will fake it, he'll fire it, corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. Marshall was in a battle with Jarek Harper, who seems to be celebrating the fact that the pass is incomplete. Second and 10, making second and goal Kilgore at the Trinity Valley six. I still I still have a hard time with that. You know, Jarek Harper is celebrating the play, but the ball was so far over the head of the intended receiver and Chris Marshall back there. But what Cameron just hurried himself just a bit to get that throw off, was thrown to a spot. And he didn't give his receiver enough time to get to it. All right, on second down and goal to go, we have a flag on the play. And we have two flags on the play with 8.43 to go. The these these are going to come in play. from two different officials too, man. This is going to be interesting. The uh, back judge actually threw a, a flag in the end zone. And the other flag came from the, from the referee right in the middle of the action where you normally will see holding. All right, so stoppage and play here with the penalties. A flag down in the back of the end zone, a flag down at the five yard line. And that it's going to be holding offsetting Rangers. penalties. Rangers with personal holding, the Cardinals with a uh, personal foul face mask. And so with the offsetting penalties, it will be second and goal from the six yard line. Well, two different officials throw flags because there's Two separate penalties, but flags really are now starting to become a factor in this first half, even though it's still just a 7 nothing score. Rangers over the Cardinal right now. So it is Maddox lining up behind Peters. High snap to Peters. He catches it, looks to his left, doesn't see anything. He's going to try to get into the end zone. And we're going to have a flag come down, a head-to-head -head collision between Peters and Washington. And they end up getting up talking to each other. And now we have Washington go down. And now he's back up. I don't know if he got pushed and flopped or what. But it was a head-to-head -head collision between the two players and Peters and Washington. Uh, both taking umbrage with that. Uh, Coach Willie really Gooden also is just he's leaning over on one side and just staring onto the field to the rest of his players as that play broke down way too fast for for Coach Gooden as as soon as Cameron got first of all the, the snap was way high so he had to Holding come out of Rangers. kind of away from how he was going to set up the play as Peters down. was actually looking to the left 
as the ball was coming back towards him, he finally got control of it, and he went to his secondary possibilities to the right. No one was there, and that's what made him take off and run. And, boy, that, that play really turned out a lot better than it probably should have with the collision that happened right at the corner. In the meantime, it is a holding penalty against Kilgore that moves the ball back to the four-yard line. It's from the spot of the foul. So the Rangers now with a second and goal to go from the 14 with 8.20 to play. So in the meantime, Washington is off the field. And for Kilgore College, Tyler Webb will come in and quarterback for the Rangers as Peters is going to take a breather as well. And, of course, those are precautions that certainly need to be put in place. So here we go. It is second down, a goal to go for the Rangers from the 14. Coming in cold off the bench, Tyler Webb for the Rangers. Fakes the snap, fires the ball. Left corner of the end zone, flag is down. And the, it is Marshall who ends up at the goal line. The defender for Trinity Valley is Isaiah Crosby, who might have an interception in the end zone. Flags come down in the meantime with 8.04 to play. And we'll see who's going to get the football. Yeah, I'm not sure where Marshall went, but throwing to a spot. Tyler Webb literally just he dropped back and saw Marshall heading towards that back corner, and I think it was throwing to a spot. Marshall somehow came off of his route and rolling under it. Isaiah Crosby just kept following the football. He made the catch and got his feet in bounds, according to the linesman on the far side. But we still don't know if this play is even going to stand. Well, I saw where the referee was giving an incomplete sign, so did Harper end up catching the football out of bounds, making Isaiah Crosby. Was he not inbounds? Complete. Yep, he wasn't inbounds. And Coach Sherrod Petit is furious on yes. the Trinity Valley sideline, and so it's ruled incomplete. Well, Manny, he's furious because I think the back judge in that back corner actually called it a completed interception, and the linesman went back and was calling it incomplete at the time. And it ends up being a judgment situation of who had a better view of it. They've got to talk about it, and evidently after they talked about it, it went against Trinity Valley. And that's why Coach Poteet about to lose his wig over across the way. Well, with 8.04 to play, the Rangers are fortunate that it's third and goal from the 14. And now back to it, it's Peters after one play out. Maddox with a handoff, a spin move, and another Ranger lost a helmet, apparently. And Maddox finally, Maddox is taken down. And it looks like he was actually getting some help from David Tuyalangenge. And instead, we'll see the Rangers with a fourth down and 12, so a two-yard pickup. Uh, that's fourth and goal line. from the 12-yard line. So Maddox down. just gets a couple, and the Rangers will go conservative. And so it will be a field goal. It is Christopher Baldasso on to kick the field goal for the Rangers. Mason Welch is the holder. Ball spotted at the 19. It's a 29-yard attempt awaiting the snap, and the Rangers with a false start. One of the Rangers got a bit antsy. Right Kenny William Boone with just enough of a move to get flagged for it. Yeah, it played before that, too. Cameron Lambert started to come off the field. Um, before they had actually moved the chain and uh, moved it to a fourth down play, took his helmet off, and one of the officials was about to say something to him, but he was so close to the sideline, he decided to let that one go too. So it was a lucky break for Kilgore there. They didn't give Baldazzo a longer field goal. This is a 35-yard attempt by Baldazzo. Ball spotted at the 25. Here's the kick on the way by Baldazzo. He has the distance, and the kick is good as it gets inside of the left upright. So Baldazzo with a 35-yard field goal for the Kilgore College Rangers, and the Rangers have a 10-point lead. 7.25 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College 10, Trinity Valley Community College nothing. We'll take this 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB.
7.25 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College, a 35-yard field goal by Christopher Baldasso. The Rangers driving 55 yards before the drive stalled out. It started at the 35-yard line of Trinity Valley. So here is the kick away by Vasquez of Kilgore College. Ball sailing to the 6, up to the 10, to the 15, and the 20, 25, 30. And down at the Kilgore 36-yard line with a wonderful return for the Cardinals was Sean Mumphrey. And so he ends up with a nice return. 7-18 to play in Trinity Valley. We'll have the first down at the Kilgore College 36-yard line. That is a 31-yard return by Mumphrey. Okay, take a yard away. 30-yard return to the 35-yard line. Stop for the Rangers and it'll be made by Damian Dunn. You know, it's not a big surprise, but solid leg work by Chris Baldazzo, who's four of five before this ball game. So five of six right now, field goal, and just a couple of yards shy of his season long of 37. First down, Peace, the quarterback for Trinity Valley, under a rush, and he loses the football as he sack. It's picked up at the 21, to the 15, to the 10, to the nine yard line. First down goal to go, Kilgore College. The Rangers with the sack and the fumble and the recovery and the pickup by Kilgore College's Caden Kenny. He's a sophomore defensive lineman from right here at Kilgore High School. Hitting him was Yonte Mary and ended up being a fumble recovery by Caden Kenny of Kilgore. The return on the fumble by Kenny ends up being a nice return. It's a 15, 16 yard return. You know how much fun it is when a lineman picks up the football and starts running with it? It, is, it absolutely just blows everybody on the bench away, especially the big guys. You know, it's like one of them ended up making a play, rumbled and stumbled and almost fumbled right you know, inside the 10 yard line, a great return. First turnover of the game. So first down, goal to go for Kilgore at the nine yard line. 7.09 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College 10, Trinity Valley Community College nothing. The Rangers ranked number three. The Cardinals ranked number four in the country. Both of these teams tied at the top of the conference standings. Peters ends up keeping it after a faulty handoff to Williams. And now Peters is gonna scramble up field and he'll get taken down at the nine yard line. One of the Cardinals who was in on the stop is now injured. And that man for Trinity Valley is Cordale Pat. So he's gonna come off on his own accord. He ended up having the initial hit on Peters. So with 6.45 to play, second down and goal from the six, a three yard pickup by Cameron. So Kilgore College will send one wide receiver to each side. Tight ends will book in the line of scrimmage for the Rangers. Dominique Williams is the tailback for Kilgore. 6.28 to play, the snap to Peters, the handoff to Williams. He has submarine down at the four yard line. So once again for Trinity Valley, it is David Tuyalagengi. He comes in and he makes the stop with 6.14 to play. Well, try to make my way down the end zone. I've, I always have technical problems when I get down there close to that corner down there, Manny, but the, uh, the, the local media going a little bit crazy as far as the uh, coverage of this ball game here this afternoon. Is uh, it's uh, there's cameras all over the place down here. Everybody's interested in these two ranked teams. 5:53 to play. Third and goal for the Rangers from the four-yard line. Double wide us to each side. The snap, the fake, the fire. Touchdown, Kilgore College. And on the button, Peters on the pass to Michael Phoenix for the score from four yards out. 5:41 left in the second quarter. Kilgore 16, touchdown. Trinity Valley nothing. Phoenix's sixth touchdown through the air all season long and one of the hardest passes, I don't care who you are, but when you take it even in the shotgun, you've got a little bit better angle, but to throw that out route as that receiver is running away from you, the angle of that throw has got to be absolutely on the money. Phoenix, very patient with that and stringing it out, turned right at the numbers, had a lot of area there to make the turn and uh, Peters hit him in stride. And the extra point kick by Baldazzo is good. 5.41 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College 17, Trinity Valley Community College nothing. We'll take a 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM, KTBB and KTBB.com. That sounds good. Is everything sounding better now, Ethan? Good, thank you, sir.
Back deep for Trinity Valley, number 14, Hyman Drinker. 541 remains in the second quarter. Kilgore College 17, Trinity Valley Community College nothing. Manny Almanza along with Kenny Smith, Ethan Lodato, our engineer back at our KTBB studios, John Hester on the camera for the Kilgore College Sports Network. The kickoff fielded at the seven yard line for Trinity Valley. And the return up to the 24, 17 yard return for TVCC by Mumphrey. And a first down again for the Trinity Valley Cardinals. So the ball at the 25 yard line, that's where they'll mark it. Are they gonna mark it further upfield now? I thought it was back further. So the center judge marked it at the 29, then it comes back to the 25, and that's where the ball will settle down with 534 to play. Ball is spotted at the 30 yard line. Also, I do wanna thank Chris Craddock. He is handling our scoreboard operation for our video stream on the KC YouTube channel today. Thanks to Reagan Sylvie as well for uh, helping us get organized with our broadcast for the weekend. First down and a handoff. This is going to be Thompson with the carry for Trinity Valley and a bunch of blue jerseys is going to be on top of him. So Quincy Thompson will get nowhere on the play. Now, there were a bunch of guys in blue there, but one of the big guys is Kiwan Robinson. He's a sophomore defensive lineman from Bryant, Arkansas. Robinson weighs 300 pounds. That'll plug a hole for you. I'm, I'm looking at these numbers, too. Kilgore's got a ton of 300s. Now we have a flag on the play, flag and this is going to be against Trinity Valley Community College. Well, the Cardinals have, and really both of these teams, have found themselves struggling with the uh, penalty flags today, and yeah. it doesn't allow Trinity Valley to get their offense on track. Darian Peace is a redshirt sophomore quarterback who has 1,437 yards passing this season, 10 touchdowns for P. So obviously he can run this offense very well. And then another flag comes down. But these penalties sure are not helping either team. Both teams have suffered, but the Rangers have overcome much better than the Cardinals have. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of times it's an intangible that it ends up affecting the crowd, ends up affecting the momentum of both football teams. Um, it, it does affect the adrenaline of the striped guys because – you know, they got to be sharp, and they've been pretty sharp tonight. Snap goes to Peace, fade pass. It's up being caught at the 15-yard line to the 20, and the reception for Trinity Valley is made by Ladarius Fair. Now, he is a sophomore out of Lancaster, Texas, which has an extremely good high school football program, as you all know. So the ball comes up to the 22-yard line to make it a third down, and for Trinity Valley, they'll need 13 more yards for the first down with 420 to play. It ends up being just a two yard gain. Fade back, it's Peace. And now flag comes down again on the far side of the field and Peace is just gonna hit out of bounds. Ends up being pushed out of bounds rather gently by Kilgore College's Julian Payne. You know, Jaquan Lowman is playing wide out for Trinity Valley. This is the second time I've, I've noticed him he is, he's got a primary route when he turns side, and he notices his, his, his quarterback is in trouble. He fights away from the defender. And it's one of those things, Manny, that everybody loves watching wide receivers work their quarterback and try to help them out. And this young man tried to get open twice when he found out his quarterback was in trouble through a block. So third down after the Kilgore penalty makes it a third down and eight. And it's intercepted for Kilgore College as Peace tried to get it over to the far sideline. The pass is picked off for the Rangers, making the pick for Kilgore College. It's Corian Francis, a sophomore defensive back out of Fort Worth, Texas. Peace tried to thread it over on the far side of the field, and Francis leaped in front of it for the pick. Well, he couldn't have done it very in, any better than that right there because he had great position. He cut with the receiver, and instead of playing the receiver, turned his head right back to the quarterback and cut right inside that receiver. He cut off that passing lane and then gave it everything he got to go parallel and pick up that second turnover for Kilgore College here in the first half. 3.56 remains in the first half, and the Rangers scoring at the end of the first quarter to take a 7 0 lead have tacked on 10 more in this period. One of them, Kenny mentioned, one of the turnovers. The Rangers got the ball at the 9-yard line off a fumble return and then punched it in from there. So with 3.56 to go, Kilgore starts this drive at the 38 of Trinity Valley. 
And I think they're going to get the clock rolling here. At least the referee did indicate that. So here we go. Everybody's set. That's the play clock that's rolling, not the game clock. First down, Peters will take the snap. He'll fake it, looking up field. He fires the pass. He's going for all the marbles, and it is out of bounds. That is well over the head of the intended receiver, Peter Alden Bradley, a sophomore from Spring, Texas, who came on strong in the game against Northeastern Oklahoma. And Coach Gooden was just singing his praises as to how well he played against New Mexico Military Institute. But this is a deep Kilgore College receiving core. And so you'll hear a lot of guys have a lot of really good games during the season. Yeah, I'm not so sure Cameron didn't just throw that away. That ball was so far out of bounds, he may have just decided to give up on that route and throw it out with 3.49 to go. So second and 10 for the Rangers at the 38-yard line of Trinity Valley. The snap goes to Peters. He's going to hand it off, and this is Trey Epps. Epps, who has a touchdown run today, will have the football at the 35-yard line with 3.40 to play. Now we're looking at a third down for Kilgore. That will be a short game. They'll put it back at the 36, so third and eight. You know, we didn't really notice it earlier, but we saw Caleb Leonard, who literally got sick on the field and got sick some more as he was trotting off of the field. He was only out for two plays. So this guy came right back in the, uh, the same series and finished up the last series as well, so this is one tough cookie. I don't think he wanted to come out to begin with. In fact, I think it was not very happy he had to come out. So the snap to Peters on third down, fakes it to Epps. Peters has a little bit of room, and then the Cardinals close it off quickly. What a great job defensively for Trinity Valley, making the tackle from behind Byron Mathis, a sophomore defensive tackle out of Houston, Texas. Well, I thought there was going to be a Cardinal stay down. He'll go off the field limping, and now he'll go back down. And I'm trying to see if that's – they don't have a 77 on their roster, and I thought that was him that went down. Man, you may be able to see his number better from there. Almost looks like – yeah, okay, that 97. is 97. Yeah, that's the just man who helped out on the tackle, Byron Mathis. So yeah. he is coming up and being helped at the sideline by a training staff. Now he's walking on his own accord. So the Rangers are facing a fourth down and nine from the 37 after a yard loss on the run by Peters. So Kilgore College up 17 to nothing in this contest with 2.48 to play in the second quarter. Well, they turned that fumble recovery into a touchdown. The Darian Peace dropping the football on the sack and a little strip and go. It turned out to be a rather dramatic return and turned into a, a three-score lead at 17-0. And that last touchdown run, so now they're going to try to see if they can convert this interception into something. So Peters going for it on a fourth down and nine from the Trinity Valley 37-yard line. Bit of movement on the line there. Peters going for it right side. Phoenix gets the inside position on the defender, and then the ball pops out of his hands incomplete. So Phoenix ended up in between three Cardinals. The ball popped Offside. out of his hands. Offsides against Trinity Valley. Trinity so Valley now the Rangers will have a fourth down. down at the 32 of Trinity Valley. So you move that five yards further upfield to make it a fourth down and four and a bit more manageable, although Phoenix almost pulled off a great catch. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do with a free play, is, is it, especially if you've gotten, you just mentioned it, the depth of this receiving core right now is throw it to one of the best receivers and just see what he can do with it. So here we go, fourth down and four from the 32, and now the Rangers have movement on the line. Fourth down and five from the 37 again. A little bit of deja vu with 2.15 remaining. Yeah, the deja vu all over again is, uh, you, know, when, when they, you know, when the officials decide not to even throw, put their flags back all the way down into their pocket or the front of their pants, they just kind of, you know, just kind of hold on to it. Uh, it. It makes it feel that way right now. Is there's, there's, we've got, I think that's got to be 13, 14 flags already first half. How about this, fourth and nine from the 37, the Rangers with the double wide receivers to each side, and it's a quick kick by Cameron Peters, and it ends up going out of bounds at the 20 yard line of Trinity Valley or so. We'll see where the referee actually spots it upfield with 2.10 to play. Manny, out of all the recipients of the, uh, the Hall of Fame that they're gonna be honoring at halftime, uh, somebody in there special to you? Well, absolutely, Jack Stallard, a fantastic friend. Of course, one of our colleagues uh, at the Longview News Journal, longtime newspaper man, sports editor at the LNJ. He is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. They did have the induction ceremony and brunch earlier today in the Duval Student Center ballroom, 
And there are others that you will hear announced at the half. And first down by Trinity Valley. Pease fires the ball, and it is over toward the right sideline and compete. That's a great catch on the far sideline for Trinity Valley. So making the grab for the Cardinals, it's Dylan Robinson. Um, they're going to put the ball down at the 32-yard line. So that'll be a gain of nine, second down and one. That punt went out of bounds by Peters at the 23-yard line. Pease fires the ball, and another catch made on the sideline. Uh, are they going to say it's incomplete? Yeah, they're going to say this one is incomplete to Robinson. So now it's third down. On the coverage from Kilgore, it was Corian Francis who just had an interception moments ago. Well, Dylan's a, he's a, a redshirt sophomore right now. He's averaging 20 yards a catch, but first time we've seen him targeted. Pass comes over left side, and the ball is caught, and a first down for Trinity Valley. Making the catch, this time it's Jared Jackson, number 15, Jared Jackson. He's a sophomore from Houston. He ends up picking up the first down. He was plunked out of bounds by Davion Moses. Ball is at the 36-yard line. That's enough for the first down, a four-yard gain. Peace on first down. Here comes the rush, and Peace is going to take off. He has some running room, and he's going to end up stepping out of bounds at the 44. Delivered and took the shot. Kobe Jones is the Kilgore defender who ran into Peace at the 44-yard line. Gain of eight, second and two for the Cards with a minute 26 left in the half. Yeah, Davion Moses, boy, he got real close to getting away with a, a shot to the face there as Peace was coming out of bounds and got him maybe, maybe a little late, but no flag. Peace on second down will fire the ball left side, a diving reception for the first down in Kilgore territory at the 47. That catch is made for Trinity Valley by Jaquan Lohman. A bevy of receivers for Darian Peace and the Trinity Valley Cardinals. Trips to the right, one to the left, 58 seconds to go. Ball is at the Kilgore 47 with a first down. Peace right side, again a reception made. This time the grab for Trinity Valley by Dejan Palomo, a freshman wide receiver out of Houston, Texas. Ball is advanced to the Kilgore 41. That's a gain of six, second down and four with 49.8 to play. Well, credit piece with the with running this offense right now, just methodically moving it down the sidelines, using the lines in that clock. Clock stopped now with 49 to go. So on second down, double wideouts to each side. Peace is going to fire this one over the middle, and it is incomplete. A little bit of hands there between both the receiver and defender. Vincent Page, the defender, the receiver, Hyman Drinkard. There is a flag back at the midfield stripe, however, with 44.1 to go. Well, I'm a drinker, literally may have even turned the wrong way, as I think that Peace was throwing that to the outside. In other words, towards the, uh, towards the corner of the end zone, Drinker turned to the inside, tried to adjust. And, boy, once you get your momentum going that far, and Peace really threw that ball on a rope. And unfortunately, the flags will come down against the Cardinals and back them up after a substantial and also a pretty impressive drive working the sidelines as well as they did. But, man, flags have just been crazy this first half right now. Ball at the 49 after the penalty for Trinity Valley, so it's a second down and 14 for the Cardinals, 49 on their side of the field. Peace under duress, overthrows his intended receiver. That was Dylan Robinson. And again, the Rangers put a lot of pressure on him. One of the guys in there for Kilgore was August Salvati. He is a sophomore defense alignment out of Clearwater, Florida. Yeah, this guy's got some length on him, and I'm not real sure why they've got, I think they've got him listed. Okay, 6'3". I think I was looking at six foot earlier, but 6'3". And uh, he's been all over piece a couple of times on these out routes, and he's the one that's kind of been forcing him to head out of the pocket and get on the run. Third down and 14 from the Trinity Valley 49-yard line. Trinity Valley with double wideouts to the right, one to the left. Peace over the middle, and it is incomplete. Trying to dive and make the reception for the Cardinals. It was Dylan Robinson. We had three Rangers in the area. Francis Page, and also for Kilgore College, it was Marcus Moultrie. And Trinity Valley will have to kick it away with 33.7 to go. Yeah, I think those last two routes, Robinson just... I think Pease had him running different routes than he was throwing to because Robinson was open both of those last two routes. Robinson was just heading up field instead of making that cut and keeping that cut tight on that in route, and Pease missed him twice. There's the snap and the kick away by Allen. 
Fair catch weighed by Phoenix, and then he'll get out of the way as this one will go into the end zone. So a touchback with 25.6 to go. The Rangers will have it at the 20-yard line, 51-yard punt by James Allen of Trinity Valley. I was about to ask Chuck Cox what he would do in this situation. 25.6 to go. Does, he, does Kilgore have like a long threat right now with that bevy of receivers that both these teams have? I think Chuck would just take a picture right now. You think Chuck would just take a picture right now? I think so. <laughs> He's agreeing with you. 25.6 to you. play. Well, I'll tell you what, we had a great time talking with Chuck at the half when we were at the game in Tyler yeah. to start the season. It's good to see him, a Kilgore College alum. Uh, he is just such a great guy. He does a lot of things very, very well. Absolutely. And good to have him on the field today taking photos. Yeah, oh. and in honor of, you know, Jack being honored today with his induction into the Hall of Fame, uh, I had asked Chuck. I said, my gosh, this is twice I've seen you in, in one year. This is a world record for us in the last 10 years. And he said, well, you know, with, with Jack going in, uh, I, I went ahead and decided to come and work just pretty much in his honor. So kind of nice. Well, that is fantastic as Cameron Peters takes the knee, and we are at the intermission from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. Our halftime score from Kilgore, it is the Kilgore College Rangers 17 and the Trinity Valley Community College Cardinals were nothing. And now we are ready to have an introduction of our Kilgore College Hall of Fame inductees in just a moment. So we do want to bring that to you live for those of you who are watching on video. For those of you at this time, who are joining us on KTBB. We will take this time out as we head to our Ranger football halftime report. So when we come back, we'll talk about who was inducted into the Hall of Fame today. And then also as well, we will be able to have more of a look at our first half scoring summary. That and more ahead on the radio on KTBB. Our halftime score is 17 to nothing. Kilgore with a lead over Trinity Valley Community College. Let's take this time out. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, stick with us for our introduction of the inductees into the Kilgore College Hall of Fame. In the meantime, we take this break on 97.5 FM and 600 AM KTBB. Ladies and gentlemen, each year Kilgore College honors former standout athletes, coaches, and contributors at its annual Hall of Fame ceremony. This year's brunch was held this morning, and we are thrilled now to honor them on the field at this time. To begin, please welcome to the field members of the 1997-98 men's basketball team, coached by Scott Schumacher and assistant coach Preston Ivory. This team was ranked as high as number five and finished the regular season ranked 11th in the nation. They finished the season with a 28-5 overall record and an 18-5 record in Texas Eastern Conference play. Now please welcome to the field Coach Patricia Beckworth Nelson. Coach Nelson played for the Lady Rangers on the 1990 National Championship basketball team. She also was an assistant coach for the Lady Rangers under Evelyn Blaylock for the 1993 National Championship team. She has been the head women's coach at Tatum High School since 2005. Her overall coaching record is 509 wins, 155 losses. Now please welcome to the field Dr. George Woodrow. Woodrow was recruited by head coach Charlie Simmons and was the first African-American quarterback to play for Kilgore College in 1968. He started every game that year and was selected first team off-conference quarterback. After KC, Dr. Woodrow went on to earn a doctorate degree in educational leadership and adult education. Dr. Woodrow has served as a high school principal, assistant superintendent, assistant professor, and educational consultant, and has published three books. Now welcome to the field, Coach Leslie Mazzina. Coach Leslie Mazzina was the inaugural coach for the Kilgore softball program, where she served as head coach from 2013 to 2020. During that time, Rangers softball earned its first tournament bid in 2017 
and first regional tournament win in 2019. She has more than 400 career, career wins and is currently the head softball coach at Illinois College. Now please welcome to the field Mr. Jack Stallard. Jack has served as sports editor for the Longview News Journal since 2016 and has tirelessly covered KC Athletics for 31 years during his 38-year career as a sports writer in East Texas. His passion for not only KC student-athletes, but all student-athletes is obvious. In 2020, Jack was inducted in, into the East Texas Coaches Association Hall of Fame as a Distinguished Service Award honoree. Also welcome to the field, Dr. Marshall Watson. Dr. Watson played football at KC in 1997, the conference championship team, and 1978 for the national championship team. Dr. Watson has served as a professor at Texas Tech University since 2006 and has three patents and one pending patent for horizontal drilling, artificial lift, hydraulic fracturing, and cementing. He currently serves as the chair of the Texas Tech Bob L. Hurd Department of Petroleum Engineering. Let's give these individuals a ranger round of applause. We congratulate all of you on this well-deserved accomplishment and wish you the best. And you just heard our public address announcer, Mark Feed, introduce a few of those who were inducted into the Kilgore College Athletics Hall of Fame this morning. The brunch took place this morning at the Duval Student Center Ballroom and those who are on the field are being greeted with applause and then after that we will have the Kilgore College Band with performance as well as the Kilgore College Rangerettes this afternoon. But those of you who are watching on our video broadcast you got to hear all about the majority of the people that were there. Let's go ahead and go over that. So our men's basketball team from 1997 and 1998 was inducted earlier today. The head coach of that team, Scott Schumacher, and a bunch of great players on the Kilgore College basketball team. Now, the 97-98 team went to the Region 14 tournament. Back then, it was held at the Farrell Center in Waco, and they ended up losing in the championship game to Angelina College. But boy, they had some great players on that team. Nolan Johnson was one of the great players, averaging 19.4 points per game. Richard Evans, 20.2 points per game and 10 rebounds. Just a lot of great players on that football team. And of course, Scott Schumacher, the head coach for the Rangers, being the leader of that team. And that was just a very fantastic team uh, to be able to go ahead and have a part in watching during the course of time. Also inducted as well, women's basketball player Patricia Beckworth Nelson. Coach Nelson is currently the head coach at Tatum High School where she, in her time of coaching both at Kilgore High School and Tatum High School, has a career record of 509 wins and 155 losses. She was at Kilgore College in 1998 through 1991. She could not play in 88 because of tearing an ACL but in the 89-90 season, the Lady Rangers won the National Junior College Championship. In the 90-91 season, the Rangers finished fourth in Nationals. The Lady Rangers did. And then as an assistant coach under Evelyn Blaylock during the 1992-93 season, the Lady Rangers won the national title then. So congratulations to Coach Nelson, not only with her contributions to KC women's basketball, but to high school girls basketball in the East Texas area. Dr. George Woodrow was a member of the Kilgore College football team, 1968 and, and 1969. And Dr. Woodrow certainly was an Bay. impact George to Jenkins. not only Dr. Kilgore College, but Bay. future Jeremy athletes. Raven he was the James first African-American quarterback at Kilgore Washington. College, recruited by College Coach Brandon Simmons, Bay. Coach Charlie Simmons, but also he was the first team all-conference quarterback selected by coaches in the Texas Junior College football conference. So he was the first African-American quarterback to play for Kilgore, first African-American quarterback to win the honor of first team all-conference by the Texas Junior College football conference 
at that time, a trailblazer. He is an educator. He has published three books, one of which is used as the official textbook for a course that he taught at the University of Texas. He has also achieved a doctorate degree in education leadership and adult education. And so certainly, Dr. Woodrow, it's good to have him as part of the Casey family in the Hall of Fame. Coach Leslie Messina was the first softball coach for the Kilgore College softball program. She was here from 2012 through 2020, and she took KC to his first regional tournament in 2017 and had his first tournament win in the regionals in 2019. She is currently the head coach at Illinois College. Jack Stallard, who Kenny and I talked about a little bit during the course of the broadcast. Well, Jack Stallard, of course, is the sports editor of the Longview News Journal. He has covered Kilgore College Athletics for 31 out of the 38 years that he has been a sports writer in East Texas. In 2004 and 2021, he was named the Texas Girls Coaches Association Sports Writer of the Year. In 2014, the American Southwest Conference Outstanding Media Service Award winner. And in 2020, inducted into the East Texas Coaches Association Hall of Fame as the Distinguished Service Award honoree. And then last but certainly not least, and you might have heard Mark talk about Dr. Watson over the PA system, the Roy Butler Chair and Chair of the Texas Tech Bob L. Hurd Department of Petroleum Engineering. He's been a professor at Texas Tech since 2006. He is president of ACT Operating Company, who's employed him since 1985. He has 30 years of industry experience with both major and independent oil companies, beginning with the Shell Oil Company. He has three patents and one pending for horizontal drilling, artificial lift, hydraulic fracturing, and cementing. He's also a member of the Society of Petroleum Evaluation Engineers and was the president of that organization in 2012. In 2019 and 2020, he was president of the Petroleum Engineering Department Heads Association. He played at Kilgore College in 1977 and 1978. The 77 team were conference champions, and the 78 team, that team, ended up winning the national championship. So congratulations to Dr. Marshall C. Watson for being inducted into the Kilgore College Hall of Fame. And that's a rundown of the Hall of Fame inductees here on Hall of Fame Day at Kilgore College for 2023. Let's go ahead and take this time out. We are at the break here between Kilgore and Trinity Valley, number three, Kilgore, and number four, Trinity Valley. Our score is 17 to nothing. The Rangers with the lead over the Cardinals. Let's go ahead and we will take this time out as you are listening to Kilgore College Football on 97.5 FM, 600 AM KTBB and watching it on the Kilgore College YouTube channel.
to our broadcast of Kilgore College Athletics on KTVB and, of course, on our Kilgore College YouTube channel. For those of you who are watching on the KC YouTube channel, we will go ahead and bring you the halftime performance by the Kilgore College Rangerettes. For those of you on the radio, stick around for a look at our first half scoring summary. The officers from left to right are Lieutenant Marlin Zamora from Donna, Lieutenant Ella Bird from Round Rock, Lieutenant Vanessa Puskins from Flower Mound. <laughs> Lieutenant Baby Louise from Keller. And in the center, the captain, Haley Triplett from Deer Park. tradition. It's their trademark. It's the high kick. November, 
Our talented sophomore rangerettes will be traveling to New York City to perform with Spirit of America Productions. We are also thrilled to announce that the rangerettes will be traveling to Honolulu, Hawaii in December to participate in the opening ceremonies of the annual Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade. Now, sit back and enjoy the Rangerette's exciting palm routine. And here they are, folks, the Rangerettes. The director of the Rangerettes is Mrs. Dana Blair. The assistant director and choreographer is Mrs. Shelley Wayne. Assistant choreographer and dance technician is Mrs. Angela Alts. Your announcer has been David Berryhill, the voice of the Rangerettes. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, these are the winners of the silent auction, of the Hall of Fame silent auction. 
Winner of the Kilgore College Wreath, Dr. Stacy Martin. The two-day hunt at MT Ranch, Matthew Glenn. The Whataburger Gift Basket, Kyle Stallard. The Bowie Hunting Knife, Matthew Glenn. Kilgore College Hall of Fame football, Dr. George Woodrow. The 50-inch television, Felicia Williams. Winner of the Orca Cooler is Matthew Glenn. And the winner of the Skeeter Boat Fishing Excursion and Fishing Poles is Jake Atchley. If you would, please meet Leonard Alvarez at the front gate after halftime to pick up your gifts. I'm here. All right, Kenny Smith is here. So, Kenny, you had the chance to experience halftime, be down there on the field when they were introducing the Hall of Famers, have a chance to talk to them a little bit. Certainly Hall of Fame, and you've experienced it before here at Kilgore as well. It's just a special time here at Kilgore College. Well, it was a special time for all of us a few years ago when our own Manny Almanza was there and uh, seeing the humbleness in which you continue to carry yourself with and, and how much you appreciate what goes on at this school and how you enhance it with uh, your efforts, with, uh, with your time, with everything that you do expertise-wise. But that's why I just barely got you. I was way out of range, and I had to run over and hug Jack because I hadn't had a chance to talk to him after his honor at halftime. So, But, man, what, just, just what great atmosphere it was here at halftime and watching the smiles on these people and what it meant to them. And the crowd response is something you don't see at this level a lot of times, Manny. And you've said it before, you know, there is a special – there's a special bond between the student body and the historic part of Kilgore College, the people that hold on to it. You know, they're, I'm, I'm going to say 50, 60 percent of your fan base as people that graduated in the 60s, 70s and 80s from this school, and they still continue to come back and support it. They certainly do. And, of course, we see that support not only coming back for homecoming or Hall of Fame, but also the fans in the stands. And it's good to have a good crowd here on Hall of Fame Day. About ready to start the third quarter of play. And we will have Trinity Valley kicking off to the Rangers. Rangers will be moving from north to south, left to right, from our broadcast position at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. And again, they're pointing out that the play clock is not working on the north side of the field. And so therefore, they will keep that time on the field. Kicking it away for Trinity Valley, it's Pedro Altamirano. He's a freshman place kicker from Clyde, Texas. He's going to send this to the goal line up to the 5 into the 10, to the 15 and the 20. A flag comes down and then tackled at the 20 yard line. It's Kilgore's Melvin Polk. He was corralled almost literally by Micah Williams, a freshman out of Richmond, Texas. Yeah, a couple of notes about those flags, too. I, I visited with Ryan Marshall, the uh, linesman, coming out of the. Uh, coming out of the locker room before the second half kickoff and ask him, you know, do y'all keep flag counts? He said 21, Kenny. He said, Trinity but it, it's Valley. both sides. It's, it's uh, Trinity Valley with 10 flags, Kilgore set. College with 11. So Three it's pretty kids. evened up, but 21 flags in that first half. And talking to uh, Coach Willie 
before the kickoff as well. All he said was it's zero zero. He said the, the penalties we can't we can't change them. He said we wish we we're gonna we're, we obviously every play you try to improve on that and try to not cause a flag. But he said it's zero zero. That was his only talk at halftime. Was this game starting over at second half? And Willie Gooden will also tell you zero zero at the half, and you want to be one and zero every week. So although he's very cognizant of the accomplishments, uh, the one loss record that the Rangers have, also very cognizant of trying to keep the team focused during that particular week. And I know Sherrod Petit does the same thing for the Trinity Valley Cardinals coaches who have the success that those two men have. They don't do it by looking ahead. They look at, they do it by trying to keep their teams focused. So there's the kick away again by Altamidano. And the ball is taken by Colk at the two yard line to the 10, all the way to the 15, the 20, has room to the 30. Colk at the 40 before he's knocked out of bounds. Uh, that was a nice kickoff return. Sometimes you give a guy second chances, he takes advantage of it. And Melvin Polk does a good job there on the return for the Kilgore College Rangers and ended up being pushed out of bounds by Micah Williams. And now we have more flags on the play. This is at the 39 yard line. And it's unsportsmanlike conduct against Trinity Valley Community College. So the Cardinals play with unsportsmanlike conduct and the Rangers will get 15 more yards added to the possession. You talk about the big guys. We talked about it before when the, the fumble recovery and the uh, the close return by Caden Kenny earlier really light, really lit up the, the sideline. Well, on that return itself, I almost got bull rushed by Caleb Leonard, ran right by me, shrugged his shoulder, and I'm surprised it didn't go down with traction or something because just the wind from that big guy about knocked over three people here trying to get to to his return man in Melvin Polk. He was so psyched up with that nice return, and he runs right back out. It's time to hit his offense. You are such a risk taker, Kenny. I, I, I tell you what. I'm not even looking at it. I'm not looking <laughs> for it. I'm not wishing for it. But but you're there. These guys are big. First down, 14:47 to play after the two kickoffs. It's a sweep to Zeke Freeman, and on the end of round, Freeman will end up going out of bounds at the 39 of Tyler. Because of the penalty, the possession starts at the Trinity Valley 45-yard line. Out of bounds at the 39 on the carry. Actually, the 38, that's a gain of seven gain by seven. Zeke. Second down and three down for three. Kilgore College. Rangers leading 17 to nothing as we start the third quarter of play from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. Well, Dominique Williams is really laying some nice blocks on the outside for his running backs and his receivers and things. He sets up in the backfield this time, but boy, he's doing a job on the outside. On first down, Williams will keep it, make it a second down and three, and Dominique is going to get hit and pushed back. Could be a loss of yardage Dominique here. Williams Initial stop for Trinity Valley by Joe Reed Sniffen. Pulliam, and also Joe Sniffen is in there, a sophomore from Belton. Well, the two turnovers in the first half, and it was the uh, the, the second no thing that Coach Willie Gooden was talking to me about, walking back to the sideline to start the second half, was uh, to capitalize on the turnovers like they did the first half, was unable to capitalize on the interception, but you take one out of those two turnovers and you got points, it's good. that's a good thing. So that's a loss to the 39-yard line, just a loss of one, a third down and four for Kilgore. Passed over the middle by Peters, he has Freeman open at the 10 to the five and into the end zone, touchdown Kilgore College. Zeke Freeman makes the grab into the end zone for the score from 38 yards out. Kilgore adds to its total, the Rangers 23 and Trinity Valley nothing, 13-26 to play in the third. Well, Freeman had the key reception, the 50-yarder in that first half that set up that last touchdown. And it wasn't even his season long. Is this guy leading this team? He's got a 78-yard touchdown grab. This is going to be touchdown number two, even though he has been so prominent in receiver with this receiving core. But Freeman again, and great patience again by quarterback Cameron Peters has just waited for him to scoot past that last defender and get open. Kick is on the way by Valdazzo. It's through the uprights, and the kick is good. 13-26 to play in the third quarter. New score, Kilgore College 24, Trinity Valley Community College nothing. We will take this 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Fox are now operating. College once again wants to thank our sponsors for today's game. Austin Bank, Azalea Orthopedics, Chick-fil-A, Aramark, Baylor Scott and White Health, 
and TA Sports. Thank you for your continued support of Kilgore College. Back deep for the Cardinals, number 14, Hyman Drickard. Number 26, Rayshawn Mumphrey. Doing the kickoff duties for Kilgore College. Number 41, Carlos Vasquez. And we are back to action in RE St. John Memorial Stadium. 1326 to play in the third quarter. There is the kickoff. Vasquez is fielded at the 15 to the 20. Cutting up field to the 25 and to the 26. 11 yard return by Trinity Valley's Hyman Drinkard. So first down for the Cardinals at that point with 13.20 to play and the Rangers up 24 to nothing. So it was a 45 yard drive for Kilgore College after the second kickoff and the return. Unsportsmanlike contact against Trinity Valley moved the ball to the Cardinal 45 and then Freeman ended up catching on the third play of the drive. A 38 yard touchdown pass from Peters. Peters second touchdown pass of the ball game. Chris Baldazzo with the extra point kick and the Rangers are up now 24 to nothing. First down for TVCC at the 26 yard line. Double wideouts to the left and one to the right for the cards. Pierce is the quarterback, rather Peace is the quarterback and he'll hand it off on first down. And that's a nice run up the middle for four yards on the carry by Quincy Thompson. So Darian Peace, who we know is a good athlete, he can sling the ball. He did it very well toward the end of the first half, trying to get the Cardinal offense untracked here. As a gain of three, second down and seven. And then the short pass by Peace to the left. It was caught by Jackson. He is a sophomore wideout out of Houston, but for a minimal game of two yards. And that'll be a third down now and four with 12.46 to go. Make it a three yard pickup. There's a the snap. Peace fading back, looking at field, fires a short pass, and it's almost intercepted by Kilgore College. Davion Moses laying on the ground with his hands on his helmet because he could have had an interception. Vincent Page almost snagged out of the air as well, just a bit too tall for him. And a flag is on the play with 12.37 to go. Is it a three and out, or is Trinity Valley going to get a first down via a Kilgore penalty? Well, I had a, a little mouth session going on the field, which was right in front of the referee for some reason. They decided to jaw a little bit in front of the ref, but back it up just a little bit because uh, Quincy Thompson, when he made his break to the sideline, he was wide open, and it was just a poorly thrown ball that time by Peace. He threw it way short and gave Moses a chance to just turn right into the lane, that passing lane, hits him right in the gut and drops it. And just the play before, he was shaken up a little bit. He had doubled over and thought maybe he was going to get sick for a minute and then bounced back and almost made the interception on the next play. All right. So fourth down, offsetting penalties. James Allen will punt the ball away for Trinity Valley. Line of scrimmage was the 32. Phoenix with the grab at the 13. He's going to reverse field, and he's going to try to reverse field, and he decides to think I'm going down. So he gains nothing on the punt return. Michael Phoenix unable to pull it off there for the uh, Kilgore College Rangers. So it will be with 12.23 to play, the Rangers with the football at the 13 yard line. Kilgore leading 24 to nothing over Trinity Valley. Yeah, Phoenix came up actually a little high, looked like he was gonna cramp up for a minute. Now that's not a flag dangling off his helmet. For some reason he has stuffed his mouthpiece inside the the hole in the top of his helmet, and I'm guessing he can't get it out because he struggled with it before he went onto the field, it looked like, and I'm not really even sure if he remembers it's up there. But it looks like he's got a bow in his on his helmet. <laughs> First down for, <laughs> for Kilgore. You know, I've seen them put mouthpieces and they stuff it in the, you know, the cage of the helmet and it's hanging off by a strap. I mean, some guys don't even put it in their mouth. They just have it there. 12-23 to play. First down, Kilgore at the 13-yard line. So Cameron Peters in at quarterback for the Rangers, and he's going to fake it to Freeman. Peters wanted to look upfield. Now he finally throws it, and it's incomplete. So that pass was intended for Kilgore's Donovan Johnson. Nice coverage on the play for Trinity Valley by Joriel Washington. It just seemed like that play took too long to develop. Yeah. Yeah, and that was more dangerous on the sideline, too, because going out of bounds with a lot of velocity was Donovan Johnson. And Johnson was lunging for the football 
off of the field. Now, the officials are back up at the eight-yard line, and they've pulled away from the offense, and they're going to talk about whatever happened behind that play. Is right after Cameron Peters let go of that football, there was some action as I glanced back after the incompletion, and we're going to see if – I don't really see a flag anywhere around, but there was – never mind, there's one on the other side of the field around the 21-yard line, Manny. That last punt by James Allen was a 51-yard kick, so that young man certainly knows how to put the ball downfield. Okay, there's got to be an eligible man downfield on that play. So that's what it is, an eligible player downfield, make it a 55-yard punt by Allen. Five-yard penalty against Kilgore, rather, for the ineligible man. Okay. And so the ball back down to the eight-yard line, 12-15 to play. So it was that, what, 22 penalties now in the game? Yeah, well, two here in the second half, so it's be 23. It just keeps on racking uh, up. You know, and, and it's funny, I had to, uh, you know, the, the radio guy had to ask the official, how many penalties have y'all thrown? And he came right at me, 21, uh, 10 and 11. You might need to ask him again at the end of the third <laughs> yeah. quarter. Yeah, we're going to do it quarter by quarter. So first down and 15 for the Rangers. Peters under duress, gets it to Freeman at the 10, Freeman to the 15. He'll go out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And maybe the referee will give him the 19, but that will end up being a nice gain of 11 yards as they give him the 19-yard line. So the Rangers now with a second down, and Kilgore will need four for the first down. Okay, I think we just keep talking about Caleb Leonard uh, as, as if he's Michael Ower in his day, but Caleb Leonard has made it so possible for Cameron Peters to just run around and do whatever he wants to with this football because he has had no pressure come from behind. Second down for the Rangers. Peters will hand it off. Epps will cut back. He gets hit hard, but he powers forward. He'll be a yard shy of the first down, so Epps will end up picking up a total of three yards on the play to make it a third down and one with 11.33 to play. Ended up getting batted around a little bit like a pinball. And McCoy Casey was one of the men in there putting the hit on Trey. So third and one for Kilgore. 11.20 on the clock here in the third quarter. The Kilgore College Rangers have a 24 to nothing lead over Trinity Valley. You a little surprised at the score right now? The Rangers will end up with a couple of wideouts to the right and two to the left as well. Cameron Peters is your quarterback for Kilgore. Trey Epps in the backfield. Trying to find out where to line up. He and Cameron are having a talk, and Peters taps him on the shoulder, moves him over to the right-hand side. Three on the play clock, and now we have flags come down as well. So the flags just keep on piling it up here at Ari St. John. The Rangers, in the meantime, have the bigger chunk of the points, 24 to nothing, 10.55 to play. Okay, well, it, Coach Gooden is yelling at his quarterback, saying, absolutely, that's what we talked about. That's what we talked about. So, evidently, he worked with Caden Pe with Cameron Peters about some type of cadence that literally would cause that delay a game penalty against the defense as he was clapping his hands and telling his team, that's what I was talking about. So, the Rangers now with the five yards forward end up getting the first down. That five-yard penalty moves the ball to the 28-yard line. So again, a Trinity Valley penalty could be crucial here. And it's intercepted at the 35 to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, and down to the 12-yard line. Interception for Trinity Valley, and it was read well for TVCC. Now, we don't have that young man on the roster, number 47 for Trinity Valley, so we can't tell you exactly who he is at this time, and that's unfortunate because he made a great read on the play and comes up with a pick for the Cardinals. Yeah, he's not on the roster. It was a fantastic defensive play, though. Cameron Peters, he had his guy. It was a jump route, but I think Peters came off of the field, and he was talking to the coaching staff about that was supposed to be a timing route, I think an out route at around the 25. And it sounded like Cameron was throwing it to a spot, and that spot was only occupied by white jerseys. Well, where I saw was number 47. Could it have been number 41, Paul Singleton the third? He is a freshman safety out of Humble, Texas. Either way, the Cardinals end up with an interception, and the return goes to the 10-yard line. So first down goal to go for Trinity Valley. That's a 25-yard interception return for TVCC. 10:44 to play. It's the first Kilgore turnover. And now Trinity Valley has an opportunity to gain some momentum down 24 to nothing. 
piece on first down. He'll hand it off to Drinkard, who cuts it up middle, and he'll get just a few yards. They might give him the seven-yard line on that. Maybe the eight, a second down and goal to go for Trinity Valley as they're a little bit of scuffling, or they're just trying to unpile players. Vincent Page comes off the bottom of the pile for Kilgore. They'll give the ball down to the seven-yard line by Drinkard, second and goal from the seven. Kilgore leading 24 to nothing, but Trinity Valley threatening following the Kilgore interception. A little bit of a shift on the defensive line. Low snap. Pierce will go ahead and keep it and go down in a heap. That just didn't work very well. The low snap through the timing of the playoff and coming in and making the stop for Kilgore. It's Cal Barner the third, a sophomore defensive lineman out of Katy, Texas. Well, if there was ever a missed handoff by Peace, Peace pulled the football out at the exact moment that Varner the third came in and just powered him down. I mean, immediately. So, well, Peace for some reason thought he saw something to keep the football. On third down, Peace, here comes the rush. He's going to float this one into the end zone. And the jump ball, it's chipped away and incomplete. Nice job for the Kilgore Rangers defensively by Julian Payne, and that was intended for Rowdy Godwin. Godwin is a tight end out of Athens, Texas. Fourth down for Trinity Valley. Fourth and goal to go from the 12-yard line. That last sack by Varner, or on the missed handoff, rather, wasn't a sack, but that last play by Farner ended up being a five-yard loss on the Cardinals, and that messed up the rest of the possession. So it is Trinity Valley trying to kick a field goal to get on the scoreboard and on to kick it for the Cardinals. It's Ty Powers, a freshman from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Ball is down, kick is on the way, and that one is through the uprights, and the kick is good. So the kick is good for Powers, and it ended up being a 19, make it a 29-yard field goal by Powers. So with 9.33 to play in the second quarter, make it the third quarter, our new score is Kilgore 24, Trinity Valley 3. Let's go ahead and take a 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. So here is a kickoff by Trinity Valley Community College. Freeman will take it at the 11 yard line to the 15 to the 20, coming up to the 25, trying to pick his way forward. Ends up going out of bounds at the 32 yard line. So a nice kickoff return by Freeman of Kilgore College. And so it will be Kilgore's ball at the 32, making the stop for Trinity Valley. Noah Flemings, he's a freshman Listed as a running back, but playing on special teams out of Austin, it was Pedro Altamirano with a kickoff for TVCC. Yeah, I'll have to uh, warn everybody that works with sideline, there's no library language on the sideline. <laughs> it's, it's all play. It's all uh, football. It was a, uh, a nice pancake that happened right in front of me, that particular return, and I saw my life flash before me. It's about 600 pounds of flesh coming right at us here at the sideline. Well, I hope that you're okay on first down. Maddox is going to get swarmed under, and Trinity Valley has some momentum now, Kenny. Great job on the initial hit for the Cardinals by number 49, Kai Brown, finished off by Corey Kelly as well. So that will be a second down for Kilgore. So the line of scrimmage was the 34, and it was a loss by Maddox of four yards. So that'll make it a second down and 14. Yeah, it's, you, can, you can just kind of feel it on the sideline also. No, no frustration here between the Kilgore College, the coaches, and the, and the players. Matter of fact, 
Cameron Lambert came off the field to apologize to his offensive line coach about missing the block. Second down, better to apologize than to get yelled at. Trips to the left, one to the right on second down. Peters looking upfield, has all kinds of time because everybody's covered, and the pass to Freeman is incomplete. It was a bit too tall, and Freeman ran into a couple of people on the sidelines. I think it was Kilgore College training staff. They seem to be okay on the coverage for Trinity Valley, Isaiah Crosby. Well, and a great show of sportsmanship also from uh, the Kilgore College the Reserves. Case Mumphrey over here helping the trainer staff repack their water as they took out about three of them on that <laughs> play right in front of the canopy. And uh, oh, a lot of blue jerseys went over to help out. So it's a third down and 14 from the 29-yard line. Oh, that team respects that training staff quite a bit. They, they better. Trips to the left, one to the right. The Rangers on a third down and very long. Snap goes to Peters, he's gonna hand it off. Draw play, Maddox, big hold to the 40, 45 yard line, evades a tackle, finally gets tackled at the midfield stripe, and the Rangers have a first down on an excellent draw play. Maddox with a first down, a Trinity Valley player is down at the 30 yard line. Well, it's not often you see a trap play where everyone, except for the quarterback and the tight end on the far left side are going to the left. Everyone else is going right, and as, as Peters, took the snap, he took off almost like a quarterback keeper, put his left arm down with his right arm extended behind him and handing that football off to Gary Maddox coming the opposite direction, and there was no one out on this side of the field even looking for somebody running. Fantastic play call there from from Kilgore. 21-yard run by Maddox, the injured Trinity Valley player who is walking off the field slowly under his own power as Ashton Payne, he's a freshman defensive tackle out of Missouri City, Texas but the Rangers, where it looks like things were going south on that particular drive, Kenny, end up coming up with a big 21-yard run and a first down at the midfield stride. Yeah, I think, it, you know, Coach Gooden even said it, too, after they picked up the, uh, uh, the positive running play moments ago. He said, now, we start over right now, right now. Once you, you lose a little momentum, you start to kind of feel it sw shifting a little bit. If you get something positive, obviously a big play thwarts all of that. But if you got to inch your way downfield, do something positive. That's what he was telling his team is, okay, here we go now. We're moving the other direction. Now it's not no flags, so just keep moving it forward. And that's what's happening right now. They're right at midfield now with 8-10 to go. So first down for the Rangers with trips to the left and one to the right. Kilgore at the midfield stripe, moving left to right in this third quarter. Maddox again, bouncing left side, a flag is down, so this one's probably coming back as Maddox gains four to the 46 yard line. And then another Trinity Valley player looks like, uh, oh, he's gonna be okay. He leaned back as if somebody landed on his leg, but uh, he's getting up, walking a little slow, but he's okay. That man on the play for Trinity Valley was Kedrian Erskine from Canton, Texas, but the Rangers called for the holding penalty. And now you're looking at a first and 20 from the 40. Yeah, it's Lambert. Uh, you know, he jogged off to apologize earlier, and this time he just shook his head because I think he knew he, he, got, a, uh, he got a hook on the backside when he saw Maddox coming back his way and just kind of threw that extra arm out and grabbed a little bit of jersey, and flag came out immediately. All right, so from the 40, Kilgore with a first down and 20. Again, trips lined up to the left for the Rangers, one man to the right. And now we have some more movement. And each team will argue it's the other's fault. But at the end of the day, somebody's going to be called for a penalty with 7.30 to go. Play clock got down to three seconds when uh, Kilgore's sideline was saying, hurry, hurry. And I think on that second one, either somebody moved or it drew Trinity Valley offside. So there's your call, a legal snap called against Kilgore College's center. So Cameron Lambert, the sophomore out of Dallas, called for the penalty. And now you have a first down and 25 for Kilgore at their own 35-yard line with 7.28 to play. In the third quarter, the Rangers hold a 24-3 lead over Trinity Valley. Well, that big game by Gary Maddox backing them back up now. They, well, they got them some momentum at midfield, and here they go now with 7.15 to go in the quarter. Trips to the left, one to the right. And it is Peters, another flag is down as Peters is just gonna chunk it up field, more like shot putting it. And now another flag comes down to the end of the play. So the shot put was intended for Alden Bradley, but I think Peters got chunked at the end of the play by a Trinity Valley player, and that's gonna give the Cardinals a penalty. The Rangers are gonna be called for a penalty, it looks like anyway. So this could be offsetting. 
Yeah, it was Joe Sniffen that uh, had the had the hand around Cameron Peters and just went ahead and slung him to the ground after the pass. And well, to his defense, too, Sniffen looked over at him and you know gave him a uh, hey, my bad. And he was glad he was okay. So good sportsmanship on Sniffen, but well, he took Peters down with a pretty good pretty good amount of force. So offsetting penalties, and you are still at. First down and 25 for Kilgore from its own 35, 706 now in the third quarter. And the Ranger lead is 24 to three over Trinity Valley. You know, this officiating crew, you gotta wonder, you know, if these guys are in a pickleball league, they're gonna, hey, this is a workout for them. Chunking these flags all day. 88 degrees right now in Kilgore. Skies are mostly cloudy at this time. Peters fakes it to Maddox, fires it over, and ball is caught by Phoenix, who evades a tackler, evades another one, and then cannot evade the other two, but he gains yardage up to the 46-yard line of the Rangers, so make it the 47. A flag is down at the end of the play, a 12-yard pickup by Phoenix off the pass from Peters, and so the Rangers will have a second down. Well, let's see what the penalty does with this. But presumably, right now, it's a second down and 13 from the Kilgore 47 with 6.49 to go. You know, it puts us in a bad spot because, well, when you see a good individual effort on the field and then something happens to literally eliminate the play, boy, it's tough. Zeke Freeman, who has uh, been spectacular After on big play. plays today. Okay, we're going to call that unsportsmanlike on Caleb Leonard. But back to Freeman. Uh, Freeman realized that the football was behind him and the completion into the hands mm. of the receiver and turned around and threw a pretty darn good block, a seal block, but, uh, but he didn't see it. So Freeman made a nice block, but could not free his receiver up for more than about three more yards. But boy, great heads he played by Freeman, turn around and making something happen. Well, now that penalty was at the end of the play, so the gain of 12 yards stands for Phoenix, and then the penalty moves the ball back to the 32 of Kilgore with 6.30 to play. The scoreboard has it as a second down and 28 for the Rangers. Down marker is third, but that was a first down play to get the ball to the 47, so it should be second down. Well, that was the, that was the center judge who noticed that on the scoreboard and then glanced over and made sure that was accurate on the down marker. Yeah, they're changing it now. They're finally gonna get that right. Your center judge is Stephen Cotton, the back judge, Logan Knight, the side judge, Mike Albanetti, your head linesman is Tyler Dable. And for Kilgore, it will be a loss of two to the 30 yard line as Maddox tried to get ahead of steam, ended up being cut down immediately by Trinity Valley's Cardale Pat. He is a sophomore defensive tackle out of Houston. Yeah, and that's a big guy too, 6'4", 295, but uh, he literally just kind of shoved Brandon Ullman aside and just made a spectacular individual effort that time. And well, Kilgore just looking for any answers right now positively, because it seems like they've had the football for most of the last five or six minutes, but with all these flags, the clock has stopped numerous times to really extend this drive for them. 5.30 left in the third quarter, Kilgore 24, Trinity Valley three. So it is a third down and 30 for the Rangers from their own 30 yard line. So Peters wants to air it out. He has a man open on the side and it's going to be incomplete. It was almost intercepted by the Trinity Valley defender, Devin Nervous, a sophomore from Colleen. The pass was intended for Kilgore Colleges. It'll be Bowens going down that yeah, side. Yeah, that was there, Bowens, Randy. number 82, who went ahead and tried to, well, actually, he was the intended target. No way he was going to catch the ball because of it being knocked away at the last moment. But for the Cardinals, sort of a tough break because it was Nervous who had his hands on the ball then was run into by one of his fellow teammates, and that messed up the interception attempt. Well, they certainly need Baldazzo now. He's averaging a little over 33 yards a kick with a long of 52, but he had a boomer earlier in the first half. See if he can come up with one right now. 5.16 to go, and the Rangers have a 24-3 lead, but this offense has stymied itself with penalties. Kick back, taken at the 32. There are a couple of penalty flags going down, and in the meantime, the return man for the Cardinals ended up going nowhere. Isaiah Crosby lost yardage on the punt return, and so now we'll see where the uh, 
penalty, what the penalty is going to be rather, with 5.06 to play, but nice downfield coverage by the Ranger special teams. Well, the tempers have kind of gotten to that second stage now, Manny, where almost every play somebody had takes exception to either contact or a little more aggressive play or even just like a, a pretty good block as uh, Zeke Freeman went flailing that time on the punt return coverage and got up and <laughs> instead of heading towards the returner, started heading over towards the guy that just floored him. So we're, we're seeing a lot of that after the play and that's gonna be one of the results of all these penalties and the frustrations with the effort that they go through to make these plays successful and then these flags come out and boy, it just takes the air out of everybody's sails. So the punt return was a, or punt was a 38 yard kick by Baldazzo. The return was a minus seven and then minus 10 because of the holding penalty. Trinity Valley starts at its own 15 with 506 to play down 24 to three. Darian Peace on first down will fire this ball over the middle of the field, and it is almost intercepted by Moses. Had he turned and looked a little bit earlier, Kenny, he would have had a pick. The pass was intended for Dylan Robinson. Yeah, and boy, he, was, he laid it in there really nicely, too, over his shoulder. And Robinson, by the time he turned around, he had to adjust. The ball was a little bit behind him, but boy, Cameron floated that football up nicely. But yeah, had he been able to turn around and maybe, maybe a second earlier, could have had an INT. Second down piece gets hit as he throws the pass and it's incomplete as the Rangers come up with a rush by Wilbur Smallwood, a sophomore defensive lineman out of Lufkin, Texas. And he went ahead and put the hit on piece as he was throwing it. So it's a third down and 10 for Trinity Valley at its own 15 with 4.53 to play in the third quarter. Rangers up 24 to three. Yeah, misspoke with Moses, of course, almost coming up with that INT, but for the pass going down there and all you see is number eight right there getting ready to catch it. Smallwood almost got peace again, and the pass is incomplete. So on the defensive coverage for the Rangers, at least tipping it away, it was Justin Callahan. Pass was intended for the Cardinals, Jaquan Lohman. And so a three and out for Trinity Valley from their own 15-yard line. Smallwood, the right defensive end, got a tremendous start off the snap and almost got to peace again. We know with Trinity Valley averaging over 33 points a game and being shut out in the first half, you know, there's not there's not really been any spark at all from this offense. And the Kilgore defense has really been able to find some way of putting in the defensive backs have been making plays. They've been shut down the receivers out routes a lot of times and now about to get the football back. There's the kick away by James Allen. Fair catch away by Phoenix. He'll have it at the Kilgore 48 yard line. And another flag is down. Right in, the, right in the area on top of, and I'm not sure if that's Callahan or Freeman out there, two number fives here, and I think it's gonna be Callahan. But he was right in the middle of that flag. He was standing up looking for the flag, and the flag came in, but he seemed upset about it. That ended up being a 36-yard kick by Allen. Ball spotted at the 49-yard line. Now we'll see what the flag is with 438 to play. Here we go. So unnecessary roughness against okay. Trinity Valley's Clarence Dalton, a freshman running back out of Galveston. You know, Callahan was flailing like it was going to be called on him. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, it, it, it looked like they were about to get great field position and then back him up an extra 15 for a personal foul, but that'll go against Trinity Valley. And again, these flags and, you know, so many procedure calls. And I think Chuck had counted them first. I think nine of those, or, or excuse me, six of those 10 against Kilgore were procedure calls. Although obviously those are correctable with, those are just mental errors. But these big 10, 15 yard penalties are hurting both of these football teams. Right now it's helping Kilgore with that mark off right now. An amazing starting field position for these guys. Well, the Rangers have it now at the Cardinals 36 yard line with 439 to play following the penalty. Just first down for Kilgore. And now we have some jumping around and we'll have is it a timeout by Trinity Valley? Timeout. Oh, it's an official's timeout. So the chain is uh, tangled broke. up a little bit, yes. Did somebody run into it or it just get tangled up? Well, we had a situation yesterday, Manny, and every once in a while, you and I and Coach, Brian Houston, Kevin Simon, all of us that do games, we come up upon those situations that really make you scratch your head. But uh, Lindale got called for sideline interference last night, and it was during a play where the chain gang guy actually tripped up the official. And 
they called the penalty against the against the visiting team. Hand off on first down. Williams able to slice through the line of scrimmage and gets tackled at the 30-yard line, making the 29 of Trinity Valley. So that's a quick hit for seven by Dominique Williams. Second down and three for the Rangers with 4.24 to play. Got to make some sense of that. The chain was actually wrapped around. It had gotten wrapped around one of the coaches' feet as they were moving the chains to mark the first down. Everybody's safe. Nobody's hurt. Second down, trips to the right for the Rangers. Peters ends up taking the snap. He'll go ahead and hand it off to Williams, and that's like the sacrificial lamb play, where here, you take it, I don't want to get tackled, and Williams gets tackled for a loss back at the 32. Had on the stop for Trinity Valley, Kilgore with a third down, and the Rangers now need six. Yeah, and they got trapped right in the middle of that because Peters had put the football right in Dominique Williams' gut, and he, because of the leverage where they were both positioned, there was no way he could have pulled that football out, which he should have done, but they were so close together, he was going to take the risk of fumbling that football or messing up the exchange. 3.32 left in the third quarter. Kilgore 24, Trinity Valley 3. Trips to the right again for the Rangers. Third down and six from the Cardinal 32-yard line. Peters looking back, has a man over the middle. Freeman, he makes a catch at the 10, and he's trying to get away from a defender, and he wrestled down at the two-yard line. First down, goal to go for Kilgore College. The stop made by Crosby of Trinity Valley, but it's a first down and goal to go at the four-yard line, so Zeke Freeman's able to make the grab for the Rangers. You know, both times that Freeman has been wide open across the middle of the field, Cameron has come back to him. It's almost as if, you know, he'll, he'll spot him, but he'll give him a chance to either go through that route or pass a defender or something. But, boy, when he looked up, we all saw that five was wide open about the same time Cameron laid it in there. So first down goal to go. That's a 28-yard pass completion to Freeman from Peters. The snap goes to Williams, and Williams trying to go through the line. Ends up being wrapped up from behind, and that's a nice job of sticking with the tackle by Trinity Valley's Davion Scott. So now you're looking at a second down and goal from the four for the Rangers. Clock continues to roll with a 24-3 lead. And this, this is not, you and I didn't get a lot of chance because we started right up at kickoff to talk pregame or so, but this has got to be a surprise for you, Manny, watching these two teams and, and following them like this. A 24-3 lead about to go into the fourth period. Rangers about to capitalize this to a four-score game. Well, and of course, you always have in your mind, at least if you're a fan or you're trying to analyze the team, hey, the Rangers had the game canceled on the 7th, and then they didn't play on the 14th because it was an off game, and Cam Peters air mails it well over the head of Chris Marshall, who was cutting in toward the back of the end zone. Peters thought he was going out and threw it out, and so now for the Rangers, they have a third and goal from the four-yard line with a minute 47 to play. But going back to that, Kenny, yeah. you just don't know about the long layoff. I mean, you didn't play the seventh, you didn't play the 14th, you're playing the 21st, so it's three weeks. And you're wondering, well, how is this team going to be? And they've answered the bell pretty well. I always wonder about simulation games for the coaching staff, you know, for these players in practice one day a week. That's a fake by Peters, and he's going to look upfield. He has a chance to run or pass, and he's going to try to pass it to his tight end at the goal line. He tried to do a little dipsy do as well. Pass ended up being incomplete in the front corner of the end zone to Joel Jamison. And so now on fourth and four from the four-yard line, Kilgore fourth and goal from the four with a minute 37 to play. Now a decision has to be made, and Kilgore will take points. Up 24-3, to three, the Rangers will... Go see if they can tack three more on. Mason Wolf will come on and hold it for Chris Baldazzo. Ball spotted at the 11. This is a 21-yard field goal attempt by Baldazzo. It will be straight on. There's a snap. Ball is down. Kick is on the way. And that one goes through the uprights. The kick is good. I thought it was going to be blocked, but Baldazzo works it through the uprights. And the Rangers tack on three more with a minute 32 to play in the third quarter. Kilgore 27, Trinity Valley 3 will take a 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB.
Minute 32 left to go in the third quarter. Kilgore College 27, Trinity Valley Community College 3. Manny Almanza with Kenny Smith. John Hester is operating our camera for our broadcast on the Kilgore College Sports Network, the KC YouTube channel. Chris Craddock handles the scoreboard for that. Ethan Laudato Engineering back at the KTBB studios. Lots of people bringing you this broadcast today. Kick is caught at the five by Drinkard and it ends up being a reverse up to the 20, to the 30 yard line, to the 40, midfield to the Kilgore 45 and 40, to the 30 and it's a fumble on the kickoff. Picked up by the Rangers at the 15 yard line and then taken down at the 11 yard line. So the fumble for the Rangers is recovered by Case Mumphrey, a freshman defensive back out of Crandall, Texas. After the reverse, the ball carrier was Isaiah Crosby for Trinity Valley, and he ended up getting the ball upfield inside of the 20 before being hit from behind. The ball squirted loose, and it's recovered by Kilgore with a minute 15 to play in the third quarter. The Rangers will have it at the 10. Well, you talk about turning tragedy into euphoria for this football team. That was a massive kick return and a fantastic play trying to cut down that runner on the far side. Then the ball comes loose and all of a sudden Mumphrey comes up with it, turns right back around, even picks up a couple of yards, gives the ball right back to the Rangers. Boy, just when they thought they were gonna shift that momentum and lose that touchdown with a possible long return and subsequent possession, right back into the hands of the guys in the blue and white. A minute 15 to play in the third quarter. Crosby has to feel awful. It was a beautifully executed play for Trinity Valley, and Crosby did a great job of picking his holes and going up the right sideline. Caught from behind, and it was ended up recovered for the Rangers by Case Mumphrey. Kilgore has a first out of the 10. Kenny, I didn't catch the number at the time of the person who actually stripped the ball from behind for Mumphrey. Hopefully we'll find that later. First down, Peters will hand it off. Left side, Epps. Stiffs Armour is a defender and then ran out of room and goes out of bounds on the far sideline. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 15 for a pickup of five, second down and five. And we have a holding penalty against Kilgore College. So that one will be half the distance to the goal. So the ball will go back to the five yard line. It'll be first and 15 with a minute two to play. Yeah, casualty of that return also. Justin Callahan came off, doubled over and came off the field and was aggravated something in that left leg. Got the trainer to work on his calf for a minute and he's cramped up pretty good down around his ankle and he's pretty sure he's turned his ankle. So he's hobbling right here on the sideline. May not see him back. 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Rangers 27, Cardinals three. First and 15 for Kilgore now from the five yard line following the holding penalty. And this is gonna be Peters on a quarterback keeper after a fake to Phoenix on the reverse. And Peters will get back up to the 14 yard line. They'll pick up nine. And a second down now for the Rangers, and six with 33 seconds to play. Flag on the play down at the eight yard line. They're gonna call him holding again. And boy, the first time we've seen Cameron literally tuck it and call his own number running off that left tackle, Manny. And he got great yardage, put him in better position to pick up a first down after that penalty and now back to back holding calls. So we have 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Kilgore leading 27 to three, but the holding penalty puts the ball back. It looks like the four yard line. So now you're looking at a first and 16 for Kilgore. So the Rangers being their own worst enemy here on this particular drive, Kenny, holding a 27 to three advantage and getting a break on recovering a fumble on a kickoff return. Snap goes to Peters in the end zone. And he's going to take it upfield because the pocket broke down. He'll end up going past the five that might give him the seven. And that'll be the end of the third quarter of play as the Trinity Valley tackler was Cordell Pat. So three quarters are in the books from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. And the third ranked Rangers have a big lead over the fourth ranked Cardinals. It's Kilgore 27, Trinity Valley 3. Let's go ahead and take this 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB.
15 minutes put on the clock here in the fourth quarter. 27-3, Kilgore College with a lead over Trinity Valley Community College. The Ranger man, drumline, starting to get into it now. Manny Almanza along with Kenny Smith from Ari St. John. Kilgore with a football. They will have it at the seven-yard line. It's a second down for the Rangers, second down, and we will call it 13. I always think it's a better idea to get closer to you and the band's over here. So <laughs> we're getting everybody working too, man. So 15 fresh minutes to go, and the Rangers on second down looking upfield. Peters, he'll loft one as Freeman gets open at the 20 to the 25 to the 30, steps out of a tackle to the 40, and Freeman's at midfield to the 40-yard line, and he'll have a first down in Trinity Valley territory as Freeman took umbrage to Crosby, pushing him out of bounds perhaps late. No flag was put down, but Freeman gets up to the 42-yard line of Trinity Valley with a huge first down off a short pass that he caught at the 20. Yeah, it's the second time we've seen that force out of bounds, but it was good play. Isaiah Crosby closed him off off the hash marks, and Freeman obviously was off to the races, as we've seen a few times tonight already. And it was a good hit on the sideline, but boy, with the momentum, they rolled almost into the wall right where I actually ran away from earlier. So glad I took that trip down the field. 41-yard pass completion, Peters to Freeman. First down, Peters again has a receiver at the 35-yard line who will go out of bounds at the 32 of Trinity Valley. The man who caught the ball is Carter Roga, so he has another reception, his third of the day. Ended up being pushed out of bounds by Devin Nervous. So the ball goes up to the 32. I said the 32. They're going to put it out of bounds at the 33. That's a gain of nine. Second down and one for Kilgore. You know, it's, I did not count how many wide receivers are on this roster, Manny, but it's a little crazy that there's so many quality wide receivers, guys that have great hands, run good tight routes, and these short routes they're running, and, and Peter's being able to hit them right on the, at that cut. Just very impressive quarterback to, uh, to wide receiver combos today. Peters will fake it to Evs. He'll call his own number, and he'll pull forward to the 33. He won't gain anything on the play. It will be a third down and one for Kilgore College. And one of the big men of Trinity Valley on the defensive line, Cameron Blaylock, who's a 315-pounder out of Memphis, Tennessee, got up a little bit slow there with 13.42 to play. Well, as many 305, 310, and 328 guys on this field, I don't know how there haven't been more guys getting up slow. You know, it's some portion of this game today. Well, it's just a very physical contest in the trenches, as you talked about already earlier, 13-20 to play. And you have these very big young men who are also very athletic. That's a fake by Peters. He's going to keep it. He'll have the first down and more right side to the 30 to the 25. He's going to go out of bounds at that point, being ushered out of bounds by Trinity Valley's Devin Nervous. But Peters able to pull the ball out of Epps' belly and come upfield for the first down carry with 13.08 to play. And the Rangers up 27 to 3. Well, this last couple of possessions, too, Manny, we're seeing Peters make that call a few more times. And not sure if they've just told him, listen, you know, there's there's alleys that are open. There's lanes that are open for you. Go ahead and start utilizing that as a quick option instead of going to your, you know, second or third tier receivers. Go ahead and utilize your speed and hit some of those holes. And he's made some pretty positive yardage here in the last three or four minutes of this game. So it was an eight-yard run by Peters, a first down for Kilgore with 12.37 to go. Epps up the middle, a little bit more room just for a moment, but he keeps his powerful legs going to the 20-yard line. That's a five-yard pickup by Trey Epps, second down and five. It took a few Cardinals to wrangle him down. Joe Sniffen is one of the guys who was there. Yeah, Epps came out struggling. He's got a, his helmet came off, and he took some kind of shot in the face as he came up quickly yelling and screaming. He is, continues to go back to his forehead. And he is pleading with the officials, saying that that was a purposeful situation there. His helmet came off after he hit the ground. He went to the ground with his helmet on. A couple of tacklers went over the top of him, and all of a sudden his helmet just came out of the scrum, and he came up holding his face. He's going to come off the field and get a little bit of attention from the training staff. So they'll put the ball at the 20. Again, a five-yard gain by Evs before he comes out of bounds. Dominique Williams comes back into the contest for Kilgore. 12 minutes to play. Play clock is down to zero. Did the Rangers get a timeout, or are they going to take a flag? Uh, yep, they're going to go ahead and take the flag. 
I don't think they got the timeout called ahead of time. They were walking to the sideline. It's like, no, we didn't call a timeout, guys. You're looking at second down and 10 from the 25 again. We'll update on Justin Callahan. He continues to sit on the bench. So hopefully Justin will be all right. One of the fine players, not just on special teams, but certainly on defense for the Rangers. Be double wide outs to each side. Now man goes in motion. It's going to be a sweep to Carter Rogas. Rogas at the 25, and that's all he will get as he's cut down. Good tackle by Reed Pulliam of Trinity Valley. So you're looking at third and 10 for Kilgore. Well, unfortunately, Decavius Bowens, who's not the biggest lead blocker on the field, but Bowens was his blocking protection on the outside. And, well, that's two of the smaller receivers and players on that outside all by themselves looking not only for protection but some extra yardage that time. So minimal gain on that particular play on the carry that time by Rogas. So the Rangers with 11.04 left in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, excuse me, have a 27-3 lead over Trinity Valley. And the ball is at the 28-yard line to make it a third down and 13. The snap goes to Peters. He'll fire this one toward the end zone. Touchdown, Kilgore College. As Chris Williams is able to get into the end zone for the score, Chris Marshall for Kilgore College. And a flag is down at the end of the play. This is going to be for a celebration penalty. But Marshall, who is tall, has long arms, was able to shield the defender and catch the ball just past the goal line in the middle of the end zone for the score. And that will end up being a 28-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Chris Marshall. And now the flag was down in the end zone. I think that might be celebration. Yes, it is going to be Marshall with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and it'll be assessed on the kickoff. But the Rangers get the touchdown, now have a 33-3 lead over Trinity Valley with 10.45 to play in the fourth quarter. Well, it's Marshall's third TD through the air on the night, or excuse me, on the season. And he has been a little frustrated away from the ball and not getting a lot of attention on his routes or being an option on this passing game. He has been... Pretty boisterous and vocal about being open or being on the opposite side of the field waiting for a pass. He finally got one, a strike across the middle of Peters, extend this lead to 34-3. Valdazzo knocked through the point after 10.45 to play in the fourth quarter. New score, Kilgore 34, Trinity Valley 3. Let's take a 60-second timeout on KTBB. Well, the Rangers finish off a 90-yard drive that started at the end of the third quarter after a recovering a kickoff, a fumble on a kickoff return by Trinity Valley. The Rangers end up driving 90 yards to get the touchdown in the fourth quarter, 10.45 to play, 28-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Chris Marshall. For Peters, it's his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. Baldazzo with the extra point kick, and the Rangers lead it, Kenny, 34-3. Well, the celebration penalty will cost him on the kickoff, so this is going to be great field position here, depending on where Hernandez hits this one. There's a kick away by Vasquez, fielded at the 25-yard line, coming toward the middle of the field to the 32-yard line, and then the Rangers special teams are there to meet the return man. And so the ball is picked up by one of the men who tackled. That's Jamari Seals. The kickoff return man was Davion Scott. And he ends up being tackled, where will they mark it, at the 30-yard line? 34, he said. So the 34 is where it will be, and it will be a first down for the Trinity Valley Cardinals. Nine-yard kickoff return, and the Cardinals have the football at the 34 with 10.38 
to play. And the Rangers continue to play through, play hard with a 34-3 lead over Trinity Valley. Now the Cardinals do have a lot of firepower, but as of this moment, the Rangers seem to have solved that issue. So we'll have one wide out to each side for Trinity Valley. Now they will put two men in motion. They're flanking tight ends over there on first down. It's a fake. New quarterback in for the Cardinals. Pass comes up field and it's caught at the 45 of Kilgore down to the 35 and a first down. The left-hander for Trinity Valley enters the ball game. Matthew Duncan, a sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina, and the southpaw gets it downfield for the first down. The reception made by Rayshon Glover for Trinity Valley. The ball is at the Kilgore 33-yard line, and the Cardinals are hurrying on offense with 10.30 to play. Well, not only Duncan completed the pass through a strike, absolutely in stride. 33-yard completion, Duncan to Glover. First down, Duncan on the move, and he is a shifty runner. He's at the 20. Duncan to the 15, to the 10, and he gets hit hard inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. First down goal to go for Trinity Valley. The stop made by Kilgore's Jaheen Patterson, but Duncan, who looks like he's a bulky player, <laughs> is able to get a first down at the 9-yard line. What a play by Duncan. That is a run of 24 yards. Handoff, first down, and this is going to be a touchdown for Trinity Valley. And that was easy, the easiest time Trinity Valley had all day long to get into the end zone. A nine-yard run for the touchdown for Trinity Valley by Hyman Drinkard. And the Cardinals get on the scoreboard with 9.54 to play in the fourth quarter, trailing 34-9. to Well, Duncan comes in sparingly uh, back in the backfield, 6-12 on the season for 120 yards plus a touchdown, but on the ground even. And just like you said, this is a thick quarterback. 11, 11 carries, 23 yards, averaging four and a half a carry. But Duncan comes in and immediately, he's got two touchdowns on the ground, also one through the air. So he's made contributions already. And the kick is up and good by Powers out of the hold of Duncan with 9.54 to play in the fourth quarter. A new score, Kilgore College 34, Trinity Valley Community College 10. Let's take this 60-second timeout on KTBB. And, of course, a flag on the extra point. Why not? After the play, unnecessary roughness, number 90 of the defense. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. remains in the fourth quarter. The Trinity Valley scoring drive went 66 yards. And for the Cardinals, it ended up taking three plays. It was Drinkard on a nine-yard touchdown run. Powers with the extra point kick at 9.54 the fourth quarter. And the Cardinals now trail 34 to 20. And Kenny, there was a penalty on the extra point that went against Kilgore College that allows the Cardinals to kick off from the 50. And it looks like the place kicker, Pedro Altamirano, is wanting to go ahead and trying to attempt an onside kick. And why not? The Cardinals are down by 24. And if they get the ball, they're deeper in Kilgore territory. There's onside kick by Altamirano. It is touched by a Trinity Valley player ahead of time. A flag goes down. And the Rangers have the football as Alden Bradley was able to gather it in at the 35. And so the Rangers have the ball. There was a penalty flag on the onside kick, and it could have been offsides against Trinity Valley, and it definitely was. So the Rangers will have the football. The run or the return, sort of a return by Bradley, was marked at the 41, so it'll be five yards to the 46, and Kilgore will take over at its own 46 with 9.52 to play. Well, I know it was a shocker to everybody. Flag coming in on the extra point as a... Tempers are starting to flare. Little, a few short fuses, as seems to always happen. You know, in either a blowout situation. And uh, after the touchdown by Chris Marshall, Marshall came off the field 
And, of course, he got the penalty, threw the penalty. But at the same time, evidently, there's a, a rule on the sideline that if they're up by 21, it's okay to dance a little bit. So he took advantage of that opportunity and showed his moves a little bit. So first down for the Rangers at the 46-yard line. Tyler Webb is coming to quarterback for Kilgore College. So Tyler Webb, number two on the charts, but certainly has a strong arm. He'll hand the ball off to Maddox on first down. The sweep goes to the right side, and Maddox is taken down at the 47-yard line. So just a gain of one by Maddox, a second down and nine for the Rangers. So on the stop for Trinity Valley Community College, it's Davion Scott. He's had a busy day out of his linebacker position today. Well, Tyler's number is very respectful, 11 to 19 on the season, about 58% completion percentage, but he's thrown, it was 11 of 19 for almost 200 yards, a couple of touchdowns, no interceptions on his record for this 2023 season. So... At the 47, a gain of one, second down and nine. Tyler Webb out of Waco, Texas. Spent some time at the University of Idaho, was injured, so did not see any playing time. Webb is rolling to his right. He's at the midfield stripe. A little bit of a stutter step to try to draw the defender just a tad. And Tyler ends up going out of bounds. It's a nice run by Webb. So Webb gets the ball upfield to the 44, make it the 47. They're trying to mark it on the sideline. All right, so it's going to settle down at the 47 of Trinity Valley. So Webb ends up picking up a total of six yards on the run. Kilgore facing a third down and three with 8.30 to play. Cameron's got a couple of inches on, on Tyler Webb or at least one on their listing, but Webb just looks a little thicker up top, looks a little bit stronger up top, but we don't take anything away from Cameron Peters. This guy's got spectacular footwork, has really showed us some, some stuff today. Tyler Webb tried a spin move, and the big 205-pounder might have the first down on that second effort as Tyler Webb carrying the football with 8.02 to play, trying to run the clock down as the Rangers have a 34-10 lead. And they're going to give him a first down, the ball at the 44-yard line. So he got the necessary three yards for the first. Well, you know, we've seen what the NFL has turned into this tush-push thing. But for the first time in my life, William Boone literally was grabbing Tyler Webb and pulling him forward. Not pushing from behind, but pulling him from ahead of him. And then threw his arms up like, I'm not doing anything. So that you can't call holding on if you're pulling your own player. So I guess that's legal. 7.35 to play, first down, Webb fakes, looks, fires the ball, wide open at the 35-yard line, and then hammered down at the 33-yard line. It is Kilgore's Dequavius Bowens. Bowens got spun around by Lamont Henry II, a sophomore linebacker out of Cypress, Texas. See, that little guy took a shot here in front of this sideline and didn't even flinch. And he, I mean, he went, he won 80 he went from moving forward to moving backward and facing the other way and took a shot, stood up, acknowledged to the defender he made a good hit and just walked off. It was a spectacular show of poise and respect right there from Bowens. 11-yard pickup to the 33, first down. Webb taking a high snap, and he throws an interception. As Webb got hit as he was trying to get rid of the ball, and is the pass intercepted or not, and that would be the number 47, which we don't have on the roster. And again, I have not seen a number 41 play today, and that is Paul Singleton the third listed as 41 on the roster. He's a freshman safety. So if they did make that number change and it is Singleton, then he has his second interception of the game. And the ball is at the 40, make it the 26-yard line, pardon me. So Tyler Webb throws the pick with 640 to play, and Trinity Valley has the ball back, Kilgore second turnover. Well, Phoenix may have been a victim there because Tyler Webb thought he was going to do kind of basically about a 10 and in route. And instead of turning in, Phoenix turned around is what we used to, old school, we used to call just a button hook where you take a, take a route right downfield and turn around. He threw it to where he thought he was going to be and caused that interception. First down. Getting out of trouble and then firing the ball out of bounds is Trinity Valley's quarterback, Matthew Duncan. Matthew Duncan, by the way, is 6'1", 225 pounds. And he certainly is a load, but the Rangers were able to get to him that time. Yeah, Jamari Seals finally got through there. He had been trying and getting really close to getting to the quarterbacks this afternoon. Finally got a body 
That time on the big guy, Matthew Duncan, took him down. Got a lot of cheers from the sideline. Happy for him. Here we go. Second down, and it is incomplete. So the pass by Duncan was intended for Rayshon Glover. On the coverage for Kilgore is Corian Francis, who also has an interception today with 6.27 to play. And now you're looking at a third down for Trinity Valley, third and 10 from the 26. You know, Duncan may have had some previous rib situations because he is literally, the reason he looks so thick, he's wearing a flak jacket around those ribs and that lower body. Here comes a blitz, Duncan gets hit. Ball pops up in the air, and it is picked up by Kilgore. They're gonna rule it an incomplete pass, but wow, Jamari Seals came in and leveled Duncan, popping the ball in the air. His arm was moving forward, according to the official. Incomplete, and it's fourth down for Trinity Valley at the 26-yard line. Boy, Xavier Tibbs thought he had a gifted touchdown right there, an absolute pop by Seals. And that would have been a replayable play right there as, boy, they really thought they not only had the turnover, but had a touchdown for one of their defensive backs. Here we go. Duncan on fourth down, throws an incompletion. Trinity Valley gambled on fourth down. They're down 34 to 10 with 6.16 to play, so they had to try it. The pass was incomplete. Braden Guillory, the intended receiver, and the Rangers should take possession of the football here. Again, 6.16 to go, but a flag is down at the 23. Unsportsmanlike conduct, it will be against Smallwood, Wilbur Smallwood. Unsportsmanlike conduct, that's his first of the ball game. So after that, a little bit too celebratory, and I'm sure Coach Good will have something to say. And so the Rangers would have had the ball at the 26 on the turnover on downs by Trinity Valley, but now they're going to end up losing 15 yards with 6.16 to play. But the Rangers lead it 34 to 10. And I know you've got to stay on that as a coaching staff is the fact you've got the lead. But, boy, the breakdowns right now that's been going on for the Rangers when something great happens or good happens for this football team, it always seems to be followed by something that, you know, that is, is caused by a mental error. And those are the things, boy, as a coaching staff, you know, you can't have – even with five games under their belt, like you mentioned too, Manny, this long layoff, you never know how, know how it's going to affect guys and how they go through game speed after having a couple of weeks off of not really having any one-on-one -on -one contact. And it's, it's worked out well for Kilgore on one side, and it's worked out really bad for him as far as the penalty aspect. Well said, Kenny. On first down from the 41-yard line, Webb will hand it off to Dominique Williams, and Williams will be tackled from behind at the 39-yard line. So it's a gain of two. The stop made by Trevon King, the sophomore linebacker out of Crosby, Texas. And coming up hobbling, too, Lorel Howling took a shot from a – and I'm looking in real quick. It's going to be Jadarlin Key who came in, was stumbling to keep his balance, and went right into the midsection – of Laurel Howling, and Howling had to get up and hobble back at his safety position and catch his breath for a minute. Key is 6'7", 355 pounds out of Longview, oh Texas. Gosh. Second and eight from the 39 of Trinity Valley. Kilgore with the ball on the lead. Williams again will go into the line, and he'll gain yardage to the 37-yard line, so he picks up two with 5.30 to play, and now a third down, and we have a Trinity Valley player injured, so we'll have an injury timeout. So gain of two to the 37 by Williams, and we'll have a third down after this injury timeout. And with 5.26 to play, we will, well, it will be the Trinity Valley player who gets up on his own accord and he is walking off the field under his own power. That's McCoy Casey. It looks like it might be his left arm that is bothering him. So the ball at the 37 yard line makes it a third down and six for Kilgore with 5.25 to play. The clock rolls again. The Rangers up 34 to 10. Well, that looked like an injury that was going to take a while. He went down and was kicking his legs as he was in some pretty good pain. But It did look kind of tough. Yeah, but got up and toughed that one out. I'm trying to think of that defensive lineman with the really long blonde hair that plays in the NFL right now. We got one of those playing for the Cardinals. Webb was trying to hand it off to Williams, and instead he gets pelted on the play. It was... A handoff that didn't take shape, and Webb goes down. Ball is back at the 43-yard line of Kilgore, make it of Trinity Valley. Stop on the play for Trinity Valley by Noah Flemings. 
And so the Rangers with a fourth down will have to kick it away. And that's a big loss that time. That's a loss of six on the play. Well, not to look ahead too quickly, Manny, but how does this shape up after the TJC victory over Cisco today for the homecoming game next weekend? Well, you're going to have a Kilgore team with one conference loss. You'll have Tyler Junior College with one conference loss. And so with Trinity Valley, they lose today. They'll be three and two. Tyler's four and one if Kilgore wins it. And right now they're on the way to do that. They will be four and one, and that will be the battle for first place in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference. The kick by Baldazzo, did they get it down inside the five yard line? They sure did. It is down at the one, and what a tremendous play on special teams for the Rangers. Julian Payne down there for Kilgore College. Nice job by the Rangers. So Baldazzo's kick is down, and it looks like they'll be, they want to mark it at the one. That's where they had it before. And the referee will actually put it down officially. The line of scrimmage was a 43 by Baldazzo, and it looks like it'll go down at the four. That's where a Ranger initially touched it. Yeah. And so that's a 39-yard kick by Baldazzo. Talking about kicking for field position, that Absolutely. was a beautiful kick. I still want to know what happened to the football that left the stadium earlier in the first half because Baldazzo kicked an extra point literally over the field house and out of the ballpark. First down, Duncan floats the pass out. It's caught by Thompson. He's at the 5 to the 10. Thompson to the 15-yard line. Spins out of a tackle, and he gets up to the 26-yard line. Finally <laughs> put to the turf by Marcus Moultrie, a freshman DB out of Harker Heights, Texas. That ends up being a first down for Trinity Valley. 22-yard gain to the 26-yard line. Well, that's what happens when you don't wrap up. When you're just interested in trying to make a, a crazy smashing tackle, you got to wrap these guys up. First down, Duncan able to get out of the pile, then fires a pass on the run. Wide open at the 45 to the 40, to the 30-yard line, to the 20. This is going to be a Cardinal touchdown. What a pass by Matthew Duncan, and he gets it into the arms of TVCC's Dejan Palomo, who's able to get into the end zone for the score, and the Cardinals are down 34 to 16 with 3.04 to play. Well, you can't loosen up, obviously, and anytime you, you get a team, and especially you got two ranked teams here playing against each other, sooner or later, Trinity Valley is going to find some type of spark. And it seems like they've found it right now in Matthew Duncan coming in for Darian Peace. And Peace didn't have a rough first half or anything or a rough go about it. He just couldn't get anything generated offensively. And so Coach Poteet decided to switch it up a little bit, bring in the big guy, because Matthew Duncan has got a rocket for a left arm and has thrown a couple of strikes and made a spectacular play right then, scrambling out of some pressure and then finding an open receiver for a long touchdown. Extra point kick by Powers is good. New score is on the board with 3.04 to play in the fourth quarter. Kilgore 34, Trinity Valley 17. Let's take a 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Three minutes, four seconds remain in the fourth quarter. Trinity Valley has scored again moments ago. 74-yard touchdown pass from Matthew Duncan to Dejan Palomo. Powers with extra point kick at 3.04 of the fourth quarter. It was a 96-yard drive, Kenya, that just took two pass plays 
for the Cardinals to get on the scoreboard again. Onside kick fielded by Carter Rogus, and then he dove down because he was about to get speared by a couple of Trinity Valley special teams players, and Davion Scott was leading with a helmet. That might be why the flag was down. Yeah, Rogus got up, thank goodness, because you could hear the crunching through this crowd mic or, or through my microphone here at the sideline. Rogus went down. You're exactly right, Manny. He made a fantastic instinctive mood, uh, move to just go straight down. Um, they didn't call it a late hit, but, boy, that sounded like helmet to helmet. But he got right back up off the turf, but it did not look good from down here. Well, they picked up the flag, so at the 46-yard line is where Kilgore will have it. Again, a nice job by Carter Rogus, who's had a couple of receptions in today's ball game with 3:01 to play. The Rangers leading 34 to 17. At one time, it was 34 to three, and then at the 9:54 mark, this is after Duncan came in. He led a drive for Trinity Valley, and that got a touchdown, nine-yard run by Drinkard, and then the 74-yard strike to Palomo, and the Cardinals are down 34 to 17. 3.01 to play. The Rangers, if they're wanting to run out this clock, need to do a better job of it. Well, the one thing that's impressive, boy, from Willie Gooden's standpoint is that, Manny, and you brought this up when we first, you first gave me an opportunity to meet him, is this guy is so super cool and coach-worthy on the sideline, never really loses his cool with the officials or his players on the sideline. He will have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. Nothing is very vocal at all, even when mistakes are made. He lets his assistant coaches take care of it one-on-one -on -one with their position players. And Willie, all he did was walk out and ask, why did the flag get, get pulled up? The referee explained it to him, and he nodded his head okay and walked off the field. And those, it's those kinds of examples, boy, that will absolutely set the tone for this football team going forward. Maddox was able to gain yardage on the play, picked up three. It's a second down and seven. Trinity Valley calling a timeout. Uh, Cardinals. Have two timeouts left with 2.56 left in the fourth quarter. Kilgore leading 34 to 17. We'll just go ahead and keep it right here, Kenny. Again, it's been a great day for Kilgore College Athletics. The induction into the Kilgore College Athletics Hall of Fame. Congratulations to the 1997-98 men's basketball team coached by Scott Schumacher. Also Patricia Nelson, women's basketball player, 89 and 90. Also was an assistant coach for Evelyn Blaylock. Dr. George Woodrow, 1968-1969 football player, the first African-American quarterback at Kilgore College and in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference back then, the Texas Junior College Football Conference. Leslie Messina was the first softball coach for Kilgore College, was here until 2020, started in 2012. Jack Stallard, the longtime sports editor of the Longwood News Journal, is our contributor. And Dr. Marshall Watson, the Spirit of Excellence Award. Tyler Webb on the keeper for Kilgore. Puts his shoulder down, runs over a Trinity Valley player at the 35-yard line. And that will end up being the first down as Tyler Webb took down the defender as he was trying to submarine Webb. Tyler Webb is not shy about hitting players. An example was in the game against Northeastern Oklahoma when he took on a defender on the far sideline at Lobo Stadium and pretty much knocked that guy out of the game. Well, I think he's maintaining that reputation because the sideline just jumped out of their cleats as soon as that collision was taken as he went right at Howling, Lorel Howling, six foot safety and 190 pound freshman and Howling tried to go low and uh, anytime you, you decide that uh, you're going to go one on one with Tyler Webb, now, you know, 6'3, 205, but, you know, when you lose a battle to a quarterback, it's like getting tackled by a punter on a return. It's, you, you know, you just got to get looked at a little differently. So Webb you don't like taking that shot. Webb went out of bounds at the 35 yard line. There was a penalty on Trinity Valley that moved the ball to the 20. So Kilgore with a first and 10 at the 20 with 226 to play, and that happened at the end of the play. So Webb will go ahead and hand it off on the jet sweep to the 20-yard line, trying to turn the corner, and then getting pulled out of bounds is Kilgore's Melvin Polk. Nice job by the defender of Trinity Valley to take Polk out of bounds. So that would have been the freshman cornerback out of Houston, Sean Connor, who made the play with 2.02 to go. Well, Polk almost made a spectacular save there too because he was about to get slung all the way to the wall on the way out of bounds by Davion Scott, but he grabbed his jersey to try to sling him out of bounds. Well, he slipped off his jersey, and Polk had regained his balance right at the hash marks, but just inadvertently backed onto the sideline and out of bounds, where he could have literally planted his foot and picked up more yardage. 
One yard gain, second down to nine. Webb will fake it to Maddox. He's rolling to his right, dumps a short pass, and it's incomplete. Putting pressure on Webb was Kai Brown of Trinity Valley, number 49. Tried to get it to Jamison, the tight end for Kilgore, Joel Jamison. And instead, it's incomplete, and a third and nine for Kilgore. Well, it was 17 nothing at half, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you know, we started the second half. Willie Gooden had said, you know, it's 0 0. We got to start over. Well, right now it's 17 17 in this second half. You know, with having a couple of two, three score lead, giving up a couple of, of easy drives and touchdowns here. But, you know, it's one of those things Willie had mentioned about starting over, even with the mistakes and with the, uh, you know, breakdowns in defense, still up by a couple of scores. Maddox gets the handoff from Webb, and he will be down at the 16-yard line. And so Webb down at the 16 with a minute 18 to play. And that will be a fourth down for Kilgore. Ends up being a pickup of two as they move it back to the 17. So the Rangers with a minute eight to play. Trinity Valley electing not to take any more of its timeouts as we're approaching the 60-second mark of this fourth quarter. And Kilgore College will do what it can to run out the rest of the time and come away with a victory and move into a tie for first place with Tyler Junior College at 4 and 1, heading to the showdown on homecoming day right here at Ari St. John against the Apaches next week. And Kilgore has taken a timeout. All the Rangers really want to do is just run the clock out. 43.8 to play. We'll take this timeout. Let's take a 30 second break. A 30 second timeout with the Rangers leading Trinity Valley 34 to 17. 43 seconds left in the fourth quarter on 97.5 FM KTBB. St. John Memorial Stadium is the site of this national matchup between number three Kilgore and number four Trinity Valley. 43.8 to play in the fourth. The Rangers leading 34 to 17. About to wrap up a victory over the Cardinals. The Cardinals won the regular season matchup with Kilgore College last year, but Kilgore knocked Trinity Valley out of the playoffs in the semifinals. And so at 43.8 to play, Christopher Valdazzo coming on for a field goal attempt. The ball will be spotted at the 23. This is a 33-yard attempt by Baldonzo. So Mason Welch is the holder. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick by Baldazzo is on the way, and that one is through the uprights. The kick is good. 38.2 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Kilgore College 37, Trinity Valley 17. Let's take a 60-second timeout right here on KTBB. for the kickoff at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium by Kilgore College holding a 37 to 17 lead over Trinity Valley with 38.2 seconds left in the fourth quarter. So the Rangers trying to lock this win up and move on in conference play with a four and one record. 
And overall, the Rangers sitting at 5-1. and one. Again, having a game a couple of weeks ago against Gordon Prep canceled. And then here's the kick away by Vasquez of Kilgore. Fielded by Drinkard at the 12. He works his way up to the 20, to the 25, and then gets knocked down at the 32-yard line. It's a 20-yard return by Drinkard. The tackle made by Marcus Moultrie of Kilgore College. Well, not so much tripped up as I think he – First time we I mentioned it before the game started about how slippery the field may have been, but that time, boy, he just started to make a cut. Leg just almost fell out from under him and went down quickly, but it was never a factor once this game started, got underway, because we had already seen two or three runners slip a little bit in the first possession, but, boy, it hadn't been a factor at all the rest of the night. 29.6 to play. The Rangers holding a 20-point lead. Trips to the left for Trinity Valley and Matthew Duncan, who we've been impressed with. The quarterback first down over the middle, has a man at the 40 yard line, escapes one tackle, but then the rest of the Rangers come to help out. Reception made for Trinity Valley by Dayton Sweeting, a sophomore tight end from Montgomery, Texas. Initial contact made by Jamari Seals, but after he slipped away from him, ended up being tackled by Jackson, that's Manolo Kelani Jackson. He is from Indianapolis, Indiana. He and others in on the stop and a timeout by the Cardinals. They have one more left, the ball at the 40-yard line, and that is an eight-yard pickup for Trinity Valley. A big guy on big guy there, too, because once they, they put in Matthew Duncan, who it shows in here he's 225. His flak jacket may, wear, may weigh, you know, 12 pounds, but <laughs> he looks humongous, but he just has a rocket. That left-handed throw and is so incredibly strong and just drilled Dayton Sweeting on that little short go route or short route across the middle. All right, back to action. Trips to the left for Trinity Valley. Duncan's under a rush and on the move as he's getting tackled, is able to underhand the ball, and it was Monolo Kalani Jackson who once again had Duncan in his grasp. Now a flag is down where Duncan went down, but he was somehow in the grasp, able to underhand the ball upfield for an incompletion. What is it about the left-handed quarterbacks that just have all this imagination and so, things? And I, I mean, I know Mahomes is kind of I don't know, change the, the way that quarterbacks deliver the football and everything, but you see these quarterbacks now that are finding a way to utilize their talent. Okay, so it'll be a horse collar on bringing down Duncan is what the penalty was called. 12.1 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the horse collar penalty against the Rangers, and that will give Trinity Valley a first down, trailing 37 to 17. You know, one thing that has been consistent is the play of the Kilgore College Rangers today. Although it has not been perfect, they have done the job offensively and defensively, and penalty flags have been consistent throughout the contest as well. One more flag with 12.1 to play. So here we go, trips to the left, one to the right for Trinity Valley as the Cardinals are down by 20. 12.1 seconds to play, there's the snap. Duncan looking upfield under a rush, and he again under duress, Fires a ball in the grasp of Wilbur Smallwood. Somehow tried to get it upfield with 6.1 seconds to play. The pass was intended for Ladarius Fair. And it took almost the entire ball game to, to see a player of the opposite team help someone else up. As Smallwood, after pulling down a hefty Matthew Duncan, pulled him down and out of respect for his effort. Once again, trying to sidearm that thing, pick up a completion or something. We didn't help him off the turf. Well, I'm very impressed with Matthew Duncan. I yeah. like this kid. He's he's playing well. He came in off the bench, engineered two scoring drives for Trinity Valley. 6.1 to play. Cardinals with a second and 10 at the 45 of Kilgore College. Pass comes up ahead. It's caught. Now moving upfield for Trinity Valley and going down as time expires at the 34-yard line of Kilgore College. The reception is made by Mario Buffin. He is a sophomore wide receiver out of Dallas. And another penalty flag on the play. It's against Trinity Valley. It will be declined, and the ball game is over as the last play for the Cardinals ends up being a 12-yard completion to Buffin. And this contest is in the books 
and the Kilgore College Rangers are back into a tie for first place with Tyler Junior College heading into a showdown next week as the third ranked Rangers have defeated the fourth ranked Trinity Valley Cardinals 37 to 17 this afternoon at RE St. John Memorial Stadium. Kenny Smith is making his way to the middle of the field where he'll have Willie Gooden in just a second. But once again, to review the records, the Kilgore Rangers are now 4-1 in conference play, 5-1 overall. Trinity Valley falls to 3-2 in conference play and is 5-2 overall. So a good win today for the third-ranked Rangers over the fourth-ranked Cardinals, a game in which the Rangers were dominant throughout the contest. It wasn't a perfect game after having a couple of weeks where they did not play. Coming back on the third week in October, they get the game in and handle the Cardinals this afternoon. Again, the Rangers and Cardinals going through the handshake line. Kenny Smith has already arranged something with Coach Gooden for an interview after the contest, and so we'll have Kenny talk to Willie Gooden in just a moment as Coach Gooden is directing his team around back to the bench area. So good win for this Kilgore College football team, and the Rangers certainly in the hunt for the regular season title in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference. So, Kenny Smith. We're working our way that way. All right. Down here on the 40, on the opposite, almost on the opposite sideline there, Manny. Well, of course, you will see as well that uh, uh, Coach Gooden will make sure he corrals the players first before going and having an interview after the contest again. Sure. He's going to have his moment with his players here. Well, both teams are – both coaches are trying to corral their players to go to the right area. And still a lot of interaction with both teams. But like you said, and that's the one thing we're going to ask Coach Willie about is, Manny, is that consistency of how they're able to work it offensively and defensively, both ends of the ball, both halves also. He got a phone call. So he's still gathering the trees. <laughs> Probably more of a congratulatory phone call. So while we're waiting on Coach Gooden to go ahead and gather the troops, let's go ahead and take a quick break as we head to our Ranger football postgame show. Let's take a 60-second timeout. Let's take a 60-second timeout as we head to the postgame show. The final score is Kilgore College 37, Trinity Valley Community College 17. This is Kilgore College football on 97.5 FM and 600 AM KTVB. Coach Gooden has his troops as they are acknowledging the school song being played by the Kilgore College Band as the Rangers are victorious this afternoon, 37-17 over Trinity Valley Community College. The other final score that we have today, thanks to Mike Monford, is the Tyler Junior College Apaches going on the road to Cisco and defeating the Wranglers by 10, 38-28 Tyler over Cisco this afternoon and so the school song has been played and again awaiting coach Gooden to come and visit with our very own Kenny Smith of course Kenny you're going to get to hear what coach is talking to the team about as well but a resounding victory for the Rangers this afternoon over Trinity Valley Community College again Kilgore College able to come out on top in a game to where from the start Kilgore College with that long drive in the first quarter to score at the end of the first quarter. The Rangers were able to take control of the game 
and come away with the victory, 37 to 17. Kenny, a very impressive day for Kilgore overall. Yeah, and that's what he's telling his players right now, congratulating the players, the coaches, the staff, the trainers also. And he did mention that uh, it was a little sloppy at times, but it wasn't anything that could be uncorrectable. And we're going to ask him that here in a second. He's, they decided to pay homage to uh, the Hall of Famers and also pay attention to the Rangerettes that stuck around for the school song and things. And when he looked up and the band was getting ready to play, that's what he was trying to gather the players over here for was to acknowledge, hey, it's let's take care of business first, and then we'll talk about football. So I uh, always, and we, we talked about it, and it's just, it's fun being around a coach that can combine old school and new school so smoothly, and a guy that's played at every level. And now he's, he's almost fully rehabbed from his knee situation he had last time we talked at the TJC game. Said he's feeling a lot better, but he wasn't happy the fact that I didn't have any cookies in my pocket to hand him, so he promised me some some snacks later on, so I'm still going to ask him about that here in a second. Well, Kenny, you certainly deserve it, and of course, Coach Gooden deserves it as well. And again, he's having some words with his team on the positive side. Ever the coach is Coach Gooden. And by the way, you know, you were talking about the uh, mix of old school and new school type of thing. Yeah. Coach Gooden, of course, played here at Kilgore College. He was on the 2001 team that went undefeated at 12 and 0, a team that many thought should have had an opportunity to play for a national championship or at least could have been voted as national champions. And so he knows the tradition of this Kilgore College football team as the team is now in prayer at this time. And so we certainly want to respect that. We can start our scoring drive summary here in our postgame show tonight. Kilgore College got on the scoreboard first near the end, actually right at the very end of the first quarter. Last play of the first quarter, a one-yard run by Trey Epps, finishing off an 82-yard drive for the Rangers. Christopher Valdazzo with extra point kick at the end of the first quarter, Kilgore 7, and Trinity Valley nothing. Kilgore College got on the scoreboard again in the second quarter at 7.25 of the period on a 35-yard field goal by Christopher Baldazzo. And then the Rangers were able to get into the end zone on a touchdown pass, a four-yard pass from Cameron Peters to Michael Phoenix, and Baldazzo with the extra point kick at 5.41 of the second quarter. Now it was a nine-yard drive for the Rangers after Caden Kenny picked up a fumble and returned it to the nine-yard line. He scooped it up at the 25, ended up with a 16-yard return, and that gave Kilgore the opportunity for the touchdown. The touchdown was made by Phoenix off the pass from Peters, and after the Baldazzo extra point kick, Kilgore College led it at that point 17 to nothing, and that's how the first half ended as Trinity Valley was shut out and Kilgore with a 17 to nothing lead at the intermission over Trinity Valley. And now we are gonna have Coach Willie Gooden come along for an interview in just one moment. It looks like he was corralled by somebody. Sorry about that, Kenny. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. He's getting pushed and pulled everywhere, but he's done with his responsibilities with the team. Everybody's hollering at him. All right, here's Coach Gooden. Kenny, take oh, yeah. it away. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, you know, you get you get with everybody and you thank everybody, and that's that's always been the grand thing about Willie Gooden yes, is sir. the fact that being grateful for everybody that's surrounded a victory, not just Absolutely. the players. Absolutely, man, it, because it takes a bunch. It takes, you know, it takes it takes a village. Like, it's old saying it, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. It takes a, it takes a lot, man, to, to kind of operate a team and and to try to help ensure these young men's success and ensure the success of about uh, about 75 to 80 guys. Um, that are all a bunch of different moving parts, man, to try to function as one. It takes a lot. So I'm, it's always important to make sure I show appreciation to all the people. Sometimes they go unnoticed. So that what that was about right there for sure. Okay, outside the flags, obviously, you played pretty consistent offensively, defensively, made some stops and things. What was it you saw best about what your team showed today? Just the resilience, just the resilience. You know, at times things weren't right, and you know, at, at times we kind of got behind the chains, and we even turned the ball over a couple times. But just, just the way we responded to adversity. You know, we never got down. We never held our heads. We 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 got, we got right back over the sidelines. We you know we, we kind of encouraged the defense when they were over on, when they were out there on the field. And you know, I, I felt like our guys and our team did a good job of being in the game, even were even when they weren't in the game. They, the sidelines were very active. Our, our home crowd was awesome. It was just an awesome environment today. So I, you know, it's important to make sure I show appreciation to every person that was involved for sure. Okay, this may be a personal question, but any anybody that you saw when they came to the school and somebody that has showed such progression that's almost moved you and the coaching staff, somebody that's maybe started out with nothing, and you've seen them progress into not only great football players but guys that have matured 
emotionally and, and physically for this football team. Anybody stand out to you? Michael Phoenix, hands down, Michael Phoenix. We got him here, uh, I want to say, in the spring of 21. Yes, sir. No, excuse me, spring of 22. We got him here in the spring of 22, um, and he played in that 22 season, but he was just an average player. And, you know, he worked his butt off. He worked his butt off in the off season. He worked his butt off, you know, when we sit up and we look up and in the summer. And he just came in. He was just a different monster. And I just saw a difference in him from a maturity standpoint, from a work ethic standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. He just, he just, he just grew strides, man. And it's, and if it's one of the ones that's the most consistent receiver in that explosive receiving group that we have, it's Michael Phoenix, hands down for sure. You, know, you don't have a difference in your playing intensity and your coaching intensity. It's always, it's loving. Yeah, we love watching it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, on, it's, it's, only, it's only one level for me, and that's 10. I can't turn it down. So, you know, I promise you that, you know, it's, it's been that way as a player, uh, and, and I, it's, as a player, as a Ranger, as a player, and as a Ranger, as a coach, man, it's the same. So, MTXE, that's okay. a mantra for sure. Okay. Yes, Good sir. luck, man, and uh, congrats on the win, too. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. You Thank bet you, Willie. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot for the time, buddy. Uh, just like you talk about, Manny, I mean, it's just it's fun, his intensity going from player you know, to individual, to coach, and he gets that across to everybody. And we saw Phoenix make play after play tonight. And to spotlight him and pick him out just absolutely on top of things. I know there's got to be sub, you know, some other players, second, third, fourth down the line or something. But to have a guy like that um, under the tutelage of uh, Willie Gooden, man, it's just always fun watching these guys play and watching him coach, man. And certainly the Rangers, everybody getting together and deserving the victory today, 37-17 to 17 over Trinity Valley Community College. Let's go ahead and take this time out. We're in our Ranger football postgame show. When we come back, we'll take a look at our second half scoring summary, talk about the standing some more, and wrap up our broadcast from Murray St. John Memorial Stadium. Kilgore 37, Trinity Valley 17, back after this time out on 97.5 FM KTBB.
We're back from the final segment of our Ranger football postgame show on 97.5 FM KTBB. Let's take a look at the second half scoring summary for today's ball game. Kilgore College leading 17 to nothing at the half, extended the lead to 24 to nothing in the third quarter, finishing off a 45-yard drive, a 38-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Zeke Freeman. The extra point kick was good by Chris Baldazzo at 13:26 of the third quarter. Rangers up 24 to nothing. Trinity Valley finally able to get on the scoreboard at 9:33 of the third quarter on a 29-yard field goal by Ty Powers that brought the score to. 24-3, Kilgore with the lead over Trinity Valley. The Rangers countered with a field goal toward the end of the third quarter and a minute 32 to go in the third as Christopher Baldazzo knocked in a 21-yard field goal for Kilgore College. And then the Rangers at that time able to extend the lead to 27-3, and that is how the third quarter ended. In the fourth quarter, Kilgore getting another touchdown to start the period at 10.45 of the fourth quarter, finishing off a 90-yard drive that started in the third quarter of play as the Rangers had a fumble recovery off a kickoff return by Trinity Valley, a great strip job for the Rangers, and then the subsequent fumble recovery for Kilgore College. The Rangers able to drive 90 yards, and at 10.45 of the fourth quarter, the finishing play was a 28-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Chris Marshall. Baldazzo with the extra point kick, and the Rangers continued on the roll. They had a 34-3 lead over Trinity Valley Community College at that point. Then Trinity Valley switched quarterbacks. Matthew Duncan came into the ballgame for Trinity Valley and engineered two scoring drives in the fourth quarter. At 9.54 the fourth quarter, a 66-yard drive was culminated on a nine-yard touchdown run by Drinkard. Powers with the extra point kick for Trinity Valley, and the score was 34-10. Kilgore over TVCC. Again, an engineered drive by Duncan paid off as Duncan connected on a 74-yard touchdown pass to Dijon Palomo. Powers with the extra point kick at 3.04 of the fourth quarter. That was a 96-yard drive by Trinity Valley Community College, and the Cardinals trailed 34-17. to The final score of the ball game came with 38 seconds left in the contest. Christopher Baldazzo put the bow on the present with a 33-yard field goal at 38 seconds of the fourth quarter, and that brought us to the final score of Kilgore, 37 and Trinity Valley 17. Again, the only other final that we have in today's action earlier in the afternoon in Cisco, Tyler Junior College defeating Cisco 38 to 28, a game you heard on our sister station at the team 92.1 FM. Also today, New Mexico Military Institute at Northeastern Oklahoma. We don't have a result of that game as of yet, and Louisiana Community is taking on, actually, in a game against Navarro College, that game was canceled, so sophomore day at Navarro College postponed to another time as Louisiana Community and Navarro, that game was canceled. Looking ahead to next week in the conference, Blinn College is on the road taking on Northeastern Oklahoma at 2 o'clock. At 3 o'clock right here at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium, the Rangers in the homecoming game will host Tyler Junior College. Cisco is at Navarro and Corsicana at 3, and Trinity Valley will make the trip to Roswell and a Wool Bowl showdown with New Mexico Military Institute. That's at 3 o'clock next Saturday, the 28th. So the Rangers are 4-1 and one in the league, 5-1 overall. The Apaches are 4-1 and one in the league, 5-2 and two overall, and those teams will meet next week at homecoming with first place on the line in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference. Trinity Valley falls to 3-2 and two in conference play and at 5-2 and two overall. And with that, we'll wrap up our broadcast this evening from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. So many people to thank for our broadcast, of course. Thanks to my partner, my color commentator, Kenny Smith. Kenny, great job as always working the sidelines and bringing your perspective about the game. Thank you so much, Kenny, for being with us today. Thanks to John Hester, our camera operator for our broadcast on the Kilgore College YouTube channel, the Kilgore College Sports Network. Thanks, John, for all of your help. For Chris Craddock running the scoreboard for that broadcast as well. To Reagan Sylvie for all of his technical help prior to the broadcast today. Thanks as well, of course, to all of you who have listened or watched the broadcast today here on the KC Sports Network and, of course, on KTBB. And a special thanks to our engineer back at our KTBB studios, Ethan Lodato. Once again, our final score from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium, Kilgore College 37, the third-ranked team in the country, the number four-ranked team, Trinity Valley Community College 17. For all of us at KTBB, this is Manny Almanza saying so long from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. <laughs>